Hi. You guys hear me? Testing. Hello. Is this thing on? You like that? Tapping the microphone for no reason, like that does something. <laughs> except as if it does anything except just annoy people. Um, hang on. We're inside the spaceship now. Wow. Um, everyone can hear me okay? See me okay? Audio is good. Excellent. Um, so yeah, just, um, felt like streaming today. I don't know. I don't feel like it very often. But today I thought, I like doing it when I just put out something. So, um, I've spent a lot of time just hunkering down and working on my new show, Hard Justice, a new Halo Reach machinima series <laughs> featuring the brand new game, Halo Reach. That's how many years old now? If you want to know why I'm using it, you can, I made a video about that. You can check that out. But nobody cares. But they'll ask anyway. I got that video out there, but then people are just like, why? Why are you using this stinky old game? It's like, well, I just explained it. And like, oh, I don't want to click on that. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh... Um, who is piloting the spaceship? That's a good question. It's actually me. Because there's only two buttons on the spaceship. I don't know if you knew this. There's go and stop. <laughs> and so I press the go button, and the ship just goes. Okay? That's the lore. Some exciting John Graham show lore for you. That's how the ship works. Um... I'm ordering food for this. It's not going to be that great. I mean, I got some things to talk about. Just like stupid shit. Because everything... Everything is stupid now. <laughs> but, you know, I compiled a list of the stupid things that are happening that have... That I have some interest in. So... I mean, the first thing I thought we would do is have a look at the Hard Justice teaser that I just put out. We can watch it together. And then uh, we can talk about that a bit. And then just some... Just some shit that's been happening, you know? Like, in the entertainment... world. <laughs> See what you guys... your guys' thoughts are, and... I'll tell you what my thoughts are. Um, how are you, John? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing pretty good. I got a nice little balance going. I mean, it's, it's hard. Because, like, I, I want to stuff so many things in a day, and it feels like there's not enough hours in the day. But I try and make time for the important things, like... Um... I, I usually get up late. Um, but I make the most out of the day and I work till late at night. So, I mean, I've tried getting up early before where it's just like, f that's it. Like, I'm fucking annoyed getting up so late all the time. I'm gonna just set my alarm, get up at six or seven, and then, like... It might work for the first couple hours, but then I'm just, like, sluggish. And I don't get as much done that I would if I had just gone up when I normally get up. And then I end up going for a nap, and then I wake up and I'm depressed because, like, most of the day's gone. You know? So... Um... So you just gotta kind of go with your own rhythm sometimes. And so I like to get up. Um, 
late in the morning. Um, I do all my tasks on my computer. You know, messages, um, checking on my, you know, emails, you know, making sure my software is up to date and shit. And, um, going through the news a little bit. And then, um, I make myself breakfast. And then I, um, and then right after that, I work out. Um, and then a shower, I make coffee and I go for a walk with my coffee and I, I walk about 7,000 steps, something like that. I try to get at least that in. I got a little park that I walk around and I use that time to listen to YouTube videos that I have on my playlist or I scroll through Twitter, look at the news, see what dumb fucking shit's happening today. Or I listen to music and I brainstorm ideas for stuff. And if it's a nice day out, I like to find somewhere to sit. And I got, I can put my phone on my little stand. And I got my Bluetooth keyboard and I can just write for a bit wherever I'm sitting. And then I might go to the library and sit and write for a bit and then read a chapter of whatever book I'm trying to get through. Um, or a bit of a chapter, depends how long the chapters are. Right now I'm, I'm reading this book on um, computer repair. And um, the chapters are really long, the material is really dense, so it, that's kind of a slog to get through. But I try and get a little bit read every day. And then... Uh, and then I go back home, and then um, I just do more computer shit. Usually it's like editing, maybe some recording. If I need to shoot like an Arby and the Chief episode, I'll, I'll start then. And, um, and I just do that until late, you know? And if I'm particularly worn out at the end of the night, I might throw a movie on for a couple hours or a video game or something. And then, um, and that's my routine. So I want to maintain that because it, it's very easy to like, like when I was making Hard Justice, because I'm shooting. So with Hard Justice, I have a whole season of episodes outlined. And I have the first, the script for the first episode finalized, and I'm shooting it now. And it's a lot of shots. I mean, I must have recorded like a thousand unique shots so far, just for that first episode. I'm not even done. And like, one of the days I spent doing it, I just did it like all day. I didn't do any of my, like I didn't eat, I didn't walk, I didn't exercise. I got a lot shot that day. But then I felt so groggy and shitty at the end of it. And I was just like, fuck, I really wish I hadn't just thrown off my routine. And I just... I found that it's important to make the time that I need for myself. Where, like, I go out, get some sun, get some exercise. You know? And then it's like I come back home and it's like, now we can get to work. I might get a little bit less done... But actually, I mean, I can actually end up getting more done because I feel better, you know, having been out, having exercised, having walked around. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to maintain this balance, you know. So I look after myself and I get a lot done. And uh, it's working out, I think. Um... Yeah. I mean, I'm certainly... Yeah, people comparing me to my 20s self. 30s John's better than 20s John. Yeah, I mean, like... I improved a lot, and... Uh, it took a lot of figuring out. Um, But I think I've got myself into a much better space now, mentally, physically. Um... 
Yeah. So that's, um... That's what's going on with me health-wise. Uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm really... I said I was gonna... Like a month ago, over a month ago, I said I was gonna stream more, but, I mean, this... This always happens with me. I get bogged down doing something else, and then... I just don't feel like it, you know? And I don't want to force myself to do something that I'm just not into. Um, but I mean, today's fine. I feel like doing it today, so it's good. Um, it's just the problem with these shows like Hard Justice, they, um, or like RB and the Chief or whatever, you know, like making cinematic content, it's extremely time consuming, like getting every shot. Um, and even one shot takes a while to get. Um, and it's just a lot of like working on my own in my room and uh, yeah so I imagine there's a bunch of people who are just like the fuck's he doing well I've been working on this new show and um, I could only put the teaser out that I did because I haven't gotten in the, the voice work for it done yet because I'm holding off casting until I get everything shot because and th and then after everything's shot the script is going to go through one more pass based on what sort of manifested in the scenes that I shot cuz like you you write scenes a certain way in the script phase and then you actually get to shooting it in the game and things don't work quite the way you thought they would. Even as familiar as I am with the way Halo Reach works, there are certain things that I expected to happen but don't. And then there's certain things that, like, I just get ideas when I'm actively, like, doing the motions. And then it's just like, oh, I need to... It'd be great if I could write some dialogue that complemented this beat. And so that's what the extra writing step is for. It's like once everything is shot, then it's like, okay, I have all, all those things in mind that happened that I wasn't expecting initially when I first wrote the, the dr initial draft. And then you go back and add those things in. Uh, and then the script will be at a point where I can like send it off to people, get voice work, and then I'll have lines for like everything that I need, you know? So, uh, I've, it's just all month, basically, I've just been recording shots for Hard Justice. I'm almost done the first episode. Almost the whole thing is shot. I've still got a bit to go, but there's like a lot that's been shot. Um, so as soon as the shooting's done, then I'm gonna, excuse me, then I'm gonna give the script another quick pass shouldn't take too long like a day or two and then um and then I'll um and then I'll start the casting process and before I make like material public I have a number of people in mind that I'm going to reach out to for doing voices. These are people that I've worked with before who like have distinct voices that I think would really work for certain roles or, you know, people who have offered to help who I think would do a good job. And once I cover roles based on those, um, cast members, then whoever's left that I still need voices for, I can make that material public on my website and then call for people to submit auditions online. And that'll help limit the amount of material in the script that I end up making public. Because, I mean, if I were to just source the entire cast with, of, with just new voices, then I gotta put all that material online. Uh, then it's just like the whole thing's spoiled. Not that that's a huge deal, but like... I like this... Um, Casting out of um, people I know who, or who I know are like enthusiastic and have uh, 
voices that I think fit for the characters and then whatever's left I'll put that public and then and so that that public audition phase will will um will come later I I'm think I can have the next episode ready sometime next month I'm just not I'm not quite sure exactly when yet but sometime next month I'm thinking I'll have the whole thing all the voice work collected and edited. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. Yeah, so right now I'm, I'm still shooting it. I'm almost done. But I figured I'd take a day just to stream because I just put out my teaser and I figured I'd just... I'm usually in a good mood when I put out a new video, even if it's a little teaser or a sample of something, you know? And then so... I like to take advantage of that good mood by streaming and then catching up with people. And um, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's been supporting me on like YouTube memberships and Patreon and all that, despite me just sort of like I'm working, but I'm just been really quiet, you know, because just because that's the work sort of demands that. I gotta just like hunker down and lock myself in my room and and just work. So, um, I'm really excited about this hard justice story, and I don't I don't know if it's something. I don't know if um. It may not be what people are expecting, including fans, and probably especially fans of the original Hard Justice, which I don't look back on fondly much if at all because <laughs> it was just like i had no idea of what the overarching story was really and there's just a bunch of ripping off from other movies and shit and it's just uh i just thought it was lame <laughs> i mean people enjoy it and that's cool i'm really grateful for that but i thought like you know i like the premise of this i like the characters I feel like I can do more with this because like I'm much more informed now on like how to like properly write scenes and also like a a long overarching story that builds to a finale, you know? Fuck you, John Hart Justice had some of the funniest jokes ever. There's probably a few lines in there that I would agree... I mean, someone on Twitter brought up uh, a line from it recently where, like, I totally forgot about it and I laughed. Like, the cops tase a guy and they're like, it's against the law to resist the electricity. <laughs> so obviously his body's, like, involuntarily seizing. And it's just like, stop doing that. It's against the law. Like, legislating against something like that is so fucking ridiculous, right? <laughs> There's probably a lot of moments like that in the show that I'm forgetting about where it's just like, okay, that was funny, you know? But I can only remember the bad parts. <laughs> the parts where I fucked up or was lazy or uninspired, you know? Um... But I, f I feel like I really got something cool with this reboot that I'm working on. It it builds up to a finale that I think is really um, powerful. I don't want to sound corny about it. I don't even know if people are going to like it, to be honest. This My new show. Because, I mean, it's funny. It, like, I tried to f fill it with, like, jokes and stuff. But there's parts where it's just, like, I'm worried that people will think it's cringe because it's taking itself too seriously when it shouldn't, but, like, there's some emotional heft to it that I think will surprise people. Um, I think there's a lot of heart in it. And, um, I hope people like that about it. It's not all... There's plenty of jokes. There's plenty of satire. Um... But also, there's some real shit about the way police operate. You know, good and bad. 
and um and there's some um, some themes some deep themes about a single person altering the course of history making a difference you know what like when you realize like everyone around you is you know corrupt and everything seems hopeless what do you do with that do you just give up or do you actually tr try to make the world a better place even if it might mean you being you know putting yourself in danger or dying um i'm actually i'm i'm really stoked about it i mean i wouldn't be working this hard on it if i wasn't excited about the story so i spent a long time on the story of it so um yeah, I hope people will just bear with me a bit longer until this first episode comes out, which will be quite long. I mean, this will be... I mean, it's like an... I think it's like an 80-page script, which will probably turn out longer than... I mean, my stuff is usually longer than the one-minute-per-page rule. So, like, it would... It'll probably end up being like, um, I think it'll be at least an hour. I'm not, sh I'm not sure yet, but the outline I have so far is five episodes, each containing at least three chapters. And, um, the first episode will be probably like an hour and then there'll be like four Four, maybe four other episodes and it all builds up to a finale that's already been conceived like I already know where the story is going the only adjustments from here on out will be just relatively minor stuff maybe some substantial work on certain plot points that I realize midway through production don't actually work as well as I thought but like a lot, a lot of the groundwork is done. Like, it's thought out. I know where everything's going, so... It's not just me making it up as I go along. You know, there's an actual... This is all being held together by an idea at the end that I think is quite strong. So... Um... Nice TED Talk. <laughs> what do you want me to do on this fucking show? It's just me in front of a camera. What do, what do I what can I do but talk? You want me to pull my pants down and twerk? That's what you all want, don't you? It'd be like those Twitch thoughts where I just wear some fucking green screen underwear. <laughs> Project my gameplay out of my fucking green screen ass. Or whatever f other fucking retarded trend is on uh, Twitch right now. Because it's on Twitch, it's just like this Looney Tunes game right now, basically, of like, oh, they just imposed this new rule. How? Let's brainstorm. How can we fuck with this terms of service rule and get around it? And then let's do this stupid thing. And then... Twitch has to be like, oh, they're doing that now. Let's add this new rule that means we can't do this. They're, they can't do this. And then it's just back and forth, right? Uh, where was I? Should, should I show the... I'll just play the, the hard justice teaser that I made for you, okay? So I just, I just put out this... Um, I made a teaser trailer for the upcoming I mean technically it's for the upcoming episode but you could you could regard it as a tr a teaser for the whole series to come um cuz obviously I haven't shot like episode 2 to 5 yet it's all just like footage from episode 1 but you can regard it as like a show teaser um so I'm just going to go over the chats. Oh, we got a super chat from Captain Kirk for five Canadian dollars. Says, I'm 29 years old, loved your work since the first season of Arby and the Chief. 
Love from Vancouver, BC. Hey, I'm from there. That's awesome, man. Thank you very much. I'm glad you stuck around so long. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just skimming the chat. Job hot tub stream win. <laughs> no hot tub streams. Show us the John Issy course. Can't handle it. Buying some of your merch tomorrow when I get paid. Money is tight. Hey, whenever, man. I mean, if you can't afford it. I mean, I, like... I still get messages on, like, Patreon and shit, where it's just like, sorry, I can't pay you this month, dude. Like, money's tight. Nobody owes me an apology, okay? I am deeply grateful for everything that I get. But, like, if you can't... If you can't afford it, you gotta keep your money, do it. You don't need to apologize to me. But I get people just wanna, like, let me know and shit, so... Anyone can cancel any time if they're supporting me. No hard feelings. Nobody owes me anything, but I'm very grateful for everything, and I really appreciate all the subscriptions and the uh, super chats and stuff. Thank you, Captain Kirk, by the way. Um, and Twitch can't ban the bobs because boys like bobs. I mean, that, yeah. It's, I mean, it's not a surprise, the whole Twitch thing. You know what I mean? Because you have a lot of males on there, playing video games, spending hours and hours and hours doing that. What do they not have in their life? Probably women. And so then they all, all of a sudden on the same platform, you have all these scantily clad women going, Look at my boobies, boys! <laughs> And of course, all the boys on Twitch are like, hmm, yes, I, I approve of, I approve of this. <laughs> I don't even have, I don't even have to go to a different website. It's all right here. Games and boobs? Wow. It's a package deal. Um... Job, where's your OnlyFans? Oh, I'm working on it. John always being a tease. There you go. Oh, brother, this guy talks and talks. Hey, guys, I made this trailer. Check it out. It's, I hope that's sarcasm. What do you want me to do? Have you watched Dune 2? Yeah, I saw it. It was sweet. Um, Seth Wilkin for nineteen ninety nine. Holy moly! Wish I could send more. This is all I have. Jo <laughs> this is all the money I have in the world, and I give it to you to waste on st Steam purchases. <laughs> You're worth every penny, man. Thank you for all the years of laughter. And happiness. You're very welcome. Thank you. I enjoy it, man. I like making my shows. I like making a... I like putting a piece of cinema together, you know? And then putting it out there. Now, I do like streaming, but I don't, I don't want it to just be my only thing. Like, I'm always... I would always be feel inclined to, like, make... Like a show. I don't want to just be guy who complains about media on the internet number 5 billion. I don't mind a bit of that. I don't I certainly don't mind a lot of people who do that depending on who they are, but like it's not the only thing that I want to do. Um I like making shows, man. I like writing stories. And machinima is a good way of like manifesting them relatively painlessly, you know, as opposed to, like, 
an actual live action production where you have to get have a crew and a cast together and logistics and you know have a first ad that's you know f keeping everybody on task and you know just securing locations and it's just a fucking I, a headache i've done it i know how hard it is so it's it's nice to make a show where you just sit on your ass most of the time <laughs> even if it does i mean it's a drag like anything else but like it definitely helps when you've written material that you're excited about and so then every t all the time you spend on like a single shot out of the thousand that are probably going to be in the total product it's just like you know what this is contributing towards making this script that, I, that I'm excited about in a visual form for other people to enjoy you know so I get a lot of satisfaction out of that Um, thank you, Seth Wilkin. I really appreciate that. It's very nice of you. I'm living out of my car right now, empty stomach, and I have five bucks to my name. Still haven't canceled the Patreon. <laughs> I hope that's a joke. Um, Team Kiltacular for $2 says, sorry, I'm giving you money, John. Sad face. You know what? I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> this time next time you may not be so lucky do a flip oh is that what I should do instead of talking don't do the typical YouTuber thing all those guys do is just talk you we want you to do something different do a flip do a series of flips groundbreaking content guys great idea sit in the dark films for five canadian dollars says hey john what's up who are your inspirations for your music and soundtrack making would you ever make a video on your music production i've made videos on my music production i think i've paywalled them though haha -ha. they're on my patreon i think i think i've got a few on there where i I do like a I break down the creation of a track I know I, I'm pretty sure it's part of my tutorial series that I have on there but I think uh, I might have done a couple streams outside of the tutorial series where like I break down making a track um, there might even be a few public live streams on my channel where I done the same thing I can't remember though I'm not sure about that um inspirations for music uh i don't really have individuals it's more like genres i love the whole synthwave thing and like and all like the subsets of that like dark core or whatever the fuck there's a million cores something core um i listen to a lot of that stuff i like the aesthetic like the sound of it, the instruments. It's like nostalgic because it takes you back, you know, to like 80s pop and, you know, video games and chiptune and shit. I like all that stuff. That stuff inspires me. Um, Ultra PC Boys Entertainment for $2. Thank you for sitting in the dark films, by the way. I appreciate it. Ultra PC Boys Entertainment for $2 says Wolfgang Maz John requesting a main theme for Hard Justice. I was uh, thinking about that. So far, I'm just using tracks that I've made already for Arby and the Chief, but uh, I am thinking about making at least a main theme for Hard Justice. Um, I haven't started making it yet, but I've been sort of kicking some ideas around, like trying to think what what would that sound like um so by the time episode one of the show comes out i might have put something together we'll see ultra pc boys entertainment thank you for that um ron s for 499 says excited for the new show 
Have you seen Halo Season 2? Maybe a media bis on it down the line. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against that. I haven't watched the whole show yet. Because, um... I mean, I've just been busy with Hard Justice shooting. And it's, it's not... <sighs> Halo's not the kind of show that I can just throw on on the side, because, like... Like, I'll have something playing the majority of the time that I'm, like, sh getting shots done, because why not, right? I mean, you might as well throw on something, but it's usually either YouTube shit or podcast stuff or a show that I've seen before or a movie that I've seen before that I don't, I'm not obligated to pay too much attention to because, like, my primary focus is on making sure the shots look right. So, like, whatever's sort of playing to distract me, I want it to be, like, something I'm sort of familiar with where I don't always have to be watching and figuring out what's going on. In the case of Halo, like, I actually want to watch that properly because I think, um, Mahler wants me on for, um, the EFAP boys are going to do, like, a Halo 2 show sometime in April. I'm not exactly sure when, but they'll want me on to talk about it. Um, and, but like, I've only seen the first two episodes of Halo season two so far. So like, I'm going to, before that time comes, I'm going to make some time to just sit and binge the whole season basically and take, take notes and, you know, watch it with no distractions. Um, but I got to say, having watched the first two episodes of Halo season two, I wasn't impressed. Um, there's maybe a marginal improvement over the first one. But it's still bogged down by, like... Like, all the non-Master Chief stuff where you're on just some planet full of randos. And they all have, like, weird space outfits on. Doing weird space things. <laughs> and it's just like... Uh, like, what are we doing here? Like, like in the first episode, it cuts from Master Chief, and one of the B stories is like this cage match or something. And then there's like this British lady riding this guy like a horse around the fighting ring, and it's, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of like stupid shit like that where it's just like what and then even the stuff with Master Chief some of the dialogue is just like Ugh, that could have been done a bit you could have worded that a bit differently in a way that worked or it's just like why are they just talking about this now of course the reason is for the sake of like entertaining an audience you know cause I mean you gotta be you gotta be careful with that sort of thing it's it's obviously the audience wants to hear the characters in the show talk about certain things, but there's certain scenarios where it's just like, wouldn't they have had this conversation already? Why are they just waiting now? Because the cameras are fucking set up, you know what I mean? Like, there's a bunch of shit like that that bugs me. But uh, the first episode had some things in it that I thought were interesting, like when Master Chief... And some of the, the other army guys that are there, they go into the village and they meet, like, shaman lady. And she's, like... She poses some interesting questions to Chief, like, is he, like, a just a drone of the war machine, or is he a man of faith? And uh, I like that question being posed, because, like, the, the idea of, like, faith and religion is something that sort of underpins the Halo franchise, because the the franchise is filled with biblical references, right? So it is it is a show, or a franchise, like, including the games here. It's a franchise that has tried to sort of bridge the gap between faith and science in the framework of this sort of, you know, straightforward action sci-fi um, story. Which I think is pretty cool. So it makes sense, like, for questions like that to be evoked. 
Um, I'm confused about a few things I've seen so far, but that there are things that might be explained later on, because, like, yeah, I mean, I haven't watched the whole season yet, but at some point I'm going to binge it all and then be ready to talk about it probably on every frame of pause, so I hope you guys are excited about that. Um, a media bis, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I really, I haven't given up on media bis and my other shows, really, it's just, I've just been thinking about hard justice right now, like, almost exclusively, and it, just that one project w just swallows me whole, you know what I mean? And it's just like, I, there's... There's not enough hours in the day for me to do everything that I want, get a decent chunk of hard justice stuff done, and then also spread myself thin enough to also do, like, recordings for media bits and professional review reviews. And then whenever I do deviate to stuff like that, I always feel bad because it's like, oh, I could be dedicating my time to something more primary and substantial in regard to, like, content. You know what I mean? Because I'm always thinking, like, people want to see a new show from me that's, like, written. And then, you know, if I just put out something where it's just me on camera talking about something, it almost feels like cheating. You know, where it's just like, uh, it's just, I feel like people are going to react negative to, negatively, you know, where they're just like, oh, th that's it? And I, I, I hate the idea of that happening. So, like, it's, a, I'm, it's a tough thing to figure out what I do, you know, like what to allot my time to. Cause I really try and stuff my days with like getting shit done, all looking after myself, but also like getting shit done. And you know, it's a finite amount of time. And right now I've chosen hard justice and it's just like, it's just occupying me entirely. I'm to, I have nothing against doing like a media abyss on Halo or whatever. It's just right now I'm so focused on hard justice. Um, anyway, thank you for my, joining my TED talk. Um, th and thank you, Ron S, uh, for your super chat. I really appreciate that. Captain Kirk for $2 says, will the hard justice reboot be a show or a movie? It's, it's a show. But the the episodes will be feature length or almost feature length. So just because, like, I've thought about segmenting my story more for shorter and more frequent uploads. But there's just some, like, if I if I uploaded it by chapter, because like the idea here is for every episode to contain at least three chapters and I've there are some chapters where it's just like god if I were to just release this on its own there's not enough there people would be going like what what's going on that happened before actually like one of my most I mean it was still above 50% but one of my most disliked videos was me uploading a clip of one of the season eight are being the chief episodes it was just like a it was just like a single scene and it was introducing adam but there wasn't enough context and people were looking at it going like what the fuck is this i have no idea what's happening and then people would just like dislike it and i, f I remember i feeling really bad about that but then I, later i put the full episode out where that same scene was in context with like a bunch of other material in a full length episode and people were like, oh, that's what that is. Okay, I get it. I was just trying to like satiate people, but like sometimes if you like put out a like a little piece of it, it's like worse almost than just like waiting until the whole thing's done. So like I'm very apprehensive to like putting out chunks of hard justice like in chapters, uploading those. Because I feel like there's just not enough meat on that bone there. But if I do like the full full episodes with at least three chapters, there's at least an act structure there where it's just like, okay, the story was going this way. And now in the same episode, we're going this direction. And now in the same episode, we're going this direction, you know? I think that's 
more satisfying. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a series, but the episodes will be fairly long. Thank you, Captain Kirk. Team Kiltacular for $2 says, give him more money, more, more. <laughs> Thanks, Team Kiltacular. I really appreciate everything. Thank you. Um, I was gonna, like, show my trailer, but, like, all these super chats are pouring in now. As I'm, like, it's, I'm very grateful for it all, but I'm, I'm wondering maybe if we could just put the chats on hold and then I can get to my trailer, because I feel like we should get that out of the way. Um, because as soon as I start on the super chats, then they all start coming in. Which is, like, really nice. But it's just, like... I kind of want to just get this teaser out of the way. So I think I'm going to pause on the Super Chats. And I'll, I'll get back to them. I'll, I'll re-initiate this. Um, so, I'm going to show you my trailer, okay? That I made. Um, so we're going to go to... Webcam media. I think this will all be working. Um, ah, fuck, that's not gonna work. Oh, wait. My headphones auto shut off. That's why I couldn't hear anything. Tell me if you can hear this. Can you guys, did you guys hear that okay? There's a little hit and the start of some music. You didn't hear that? Hmm. Okay. Oh, I had it muted. Okay, well, that's good. Thanks for telling me. So, let's try that again. Can you guys hear this? Should have been able to hear it that time. Can, did you hear that okay? Okay, good. Alright, so... This is my teaser for Hard Justice. Okay, here we go. Good one. Oh, hi. Lol. Is you Max Dangerfield? Uh, yeah. Captain Marshall will see you right this very now. K. K. Beat boop. La mao. <laughs> Sir? Dangerfield? Yeah. Come in. Please, have a seat. Or just crouch down. Sorry, there's no chair. Sorry, just closing some porn tabs. Cool name. Thanks. Sure as hell fits. You took the training. Impressive. I think it's the least I can do. I mean, the fact you took the course is impressive enough, but your scores are some of the best I've seen. I know it's fast, but... I'm putting teams together. Strike units. Door kickers. Priority targets. Worst of the worst. I want it.
So just a little, little piece. Ear rape, yeah, I know. I thought it was cool. Um, because I was thinking like, I got all this footage shot so far. I want to show people that I have actually been working on shit this month. So, what will this look like? What can what can I do in regard to like making a trailer? At this point with what I have. I don't have voice work from any people other than myself. But I have all these shots. Right? So if I do a scene from the script for the first episode where it's characters that I would, I would voice both of them. And then just do like an intense montage of shots that I've done. Um, then people get to see like a, a montage of shots that I've already done that look cool. And then I can play around with sound design and make that kind of interesting. I may have gotten, gone a little too far with the ear rape, but I thought it was intense and cool. And then, um, but also the, the preface of like, just do like doing the, a scene basically uncut from the first episode, you kind of see what the show, how the show is going to play out in terms of on a level of like simple conversational execution. And then you kind of see there's an example of like some of the self referential humor, like the fact that the machinima medium is so limited and you got to work away, work around the way the game works sometimes. Like, there's some jokes about that. There's a joke about that in that clip. And so, like, it, it gets people expecting, like, okay, this, so there's going to be some, like, some fourth wall breaking jokes, but there, it's not going to do that too much. It's just here and there, there's going to be jokes about the fact that it's Machinima Unlimited. But also, like, people get the sense that I'm taking the world with some degree of seriousness. Like, there's a logic to it even if it's silly. And, um, I just, I like the, the, that sort of basic plot beat of like, I mean, it's like the cliche, right? I'm putting together a team, you know? It's just like, here's what we're doing. We're making teams. I want you to be a part of it because you're efficient, you're good at what you do, and then you have Max's enthusiasm where it's just like, I want to be a part of this. And then, like, what's going to happen from there? You know, what's he in store for? And then you follow that up with a montage of cool action stuff. Um, so, yeah, that was my little teaser just to show people that I am working on this. But I just, I need a bit more time with it. I got to finish off the shooting, which shouldn't take too much longer because I've shot the bulk of the first episode now. There's just a... Uh, several scenes that I need to shoot, which sounds like a lot, but I've shot a lot of scenes already, so. Um, so yeah, I just gotta f shoot the rest, poli spend a day or two polishing the script based on all the stuff that's been recorded, just in case there's some lines missing that should be in there, and then I can start printing off, like, character sides. And then I can, I'll reach out to people for voices. And then once I, and then as those voice, that voice work is trickling in, I will be like editing scenes based on what I have and what scenes I can complete. It's just like, okay, I have the voice work for this today. So I'll get this scene done and then just do that as more and more voice files come in and then sometime in April I think I'll have the whole thing done I'll be able to put it out so yeah that's hard justice so there you go I hope you thought the trailer was cool um I was actually a bit I mean I would like the numbers on it to be a bit higher on the trailer um but I did expect them to be low and I thought they were going to be lower than they are so, um, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a little surprised by 
how well it's doing, but I would I would prefer if the numbers were higher, but whatever. What can I do? I mean, I'm doing I'm doing my best, you know. That's all I can do. I'm trying to make something cool and interesting and I have I actually have maybe one more season of me in this, but I might not even do it cuz like there there might just not be enough interest in the show f for me to justify like continuing it for another season. But you know, I'm I'm really excited about it and uh we'll see hopefully interest picks up as the episodes come out. And then by by the time the finale is done, we'll see where we are. Maybe I'll do one more season because I feel like I can do another one. Um, and then that'll probably be it. One, maybe two seasons after this, but I might not even do them. It just depends on how people respond to the first one. But I am determined to do this first season because I think it's it has a very powerful message at the end of it something that I think everyone can get on board with and is very affecting. So, yeah. Thanks, that was my TED Talk. That This is full. This stream is just TED Talks, start to finish. So that was that TED Talk. Um... Just skimming the chats. I think we'll 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 go back on to super chats. Cause that can actually be a good way of just covering stuff that I already had written down anyway. So I mean I don't really have any um other production updates to share. Like you'll probably see some more music from me. I wanna make I want to at least make a main theme for hard justice. Um because I got a new little keyboard. I got this thing the other day. Um, it's a little... Um, it's a MIDI controller. Um, but also, like, it has internal sounds built into it. It has, like, an internal sound bank. So, like, I've got... Uh, I mean, I love this thing. It's so cool. Just to, like in a way turn my brain off and just like just hit notes and being like what sounds cool like just getting lost in it not turning my brain off in a way where I'm not like thinking about it but just like I like making music because I can just sort of sort of get lost in that one thing you know and I love having this thing as opposed to just like constantly painting the notes on a sequencer which is what I used to do I like I love having this thing and then, um, so yeah, and I, I got a new, I got a new VST as well, and some sound packs, so I can make, I've got some new material to work with to, like, make tracks, so I'd like to make more music soon. At least make one, a new track for Hard Justice, like, as a main theme. And then, RB and the Chief, I think... I mean, I have nothing against making new episodes, but it's just like, I got to pick one thing because whatever the one thing is that I pick to work on, it's just going to like consume me, right? Even something as little as like, you know, recently I did the Arby and the Chief, um, the New Year thing where he fucks Arbiter's mom <laughs> and then the Chief taking his helmet off. They're shorts, but like as soon as I decide to do one of those, on a particular month that immediately carves out like at least it's a little over a week I would say like minimum to like get that done and out of the way and that's all time that I could be like it's not good to split myself between two big projects like that you know what I mean it's either hard justice for a month or RB and the Chief for a month. It's very hard to like do RB and the Chief, and then it's just like, okay, with the rest of the time, let's do the hard justice stuff. It's just like, no, I'm in hard justice right now, and I'm just gonna work on that. So I'm right now I want to just put RB and the Chief on hold, and then when I need 
I don't know, there might be a time in Hard Justice's production where I need to just step away from it. Well, I mean, that time hasn't come yet because I'm, I'm quite happy just staying on the role that I'm on right now, but there may come a time where it's just like, okay, like I got to put this down and then I can just work on our, a little R being the chief thing as a distraction and then come back to Hard Justice. So for the time being, I don't have any... I mean, I have plenty of R being the chief material written for like episodes, but like pursuing any one of those in terms of production is just like immediately going to fractionate and occupy a whole bunch of my time. So I'd rather just focus on hard justice right now while I'm on a roll. I'm not canceling R being the chief. I still have ideas. I'd still, I still enjoy it. I still like making them, but, uh, it may be a little while before I make another one. Hopefully people aren't sore about that and they're just happy that I'm working on something, whatever it is. I hope that's the case. Anyway, that was my TED talk for, for that. Lots of TED talks today. Okay, so we're gonna... Let's... Let's go back to Super Chats. See what else we got here. Um, I'm trying to find where it was. Fuck. Isn't there a page where it just shows you the super chats? I mean, fucking hell. Oh yeah, fan funding. That was it. Um, oh, I even, I think I missed a few. Near the beginning. Shit. Sorry about that. So I'll do those now. So, era of the day, $5, no message. Thank you for that, era of the day. I really appreciate it. Team Kiltacular for $1.99 says, Yes, more John Tent. Let's fucking LFG. Asterisk, I'm lonely. <laughs> That's okay. We're all here. None of us are alone. While the show's going, right? Thanks, Team Kiltacular. Chernobyl Pwn for one ninety nine says, I'll start Nickelodeon Quiet On Set Go. You know, I actually haven't seen that yet. I'm interested, though. I mean, it's hardly news. I mean, I figured that whole realm was creepy already. And now it's just like, yeah, saw that coming, you know? Uh, but I, I would like to see the show... It looks cool. Or, you know, you know what I mean? Interesting. I mean, it's f horrible, all the shit, but I'll check it out. Um, Tobias Edverson for 12... Um, I, can, I can never remember this currency and okay, but I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, AP joined as a member of Gosu. Wow. What a big dick that guy has. If he's a guy, I don't know. Um, thank you, AP. Really appreciate that. Captain Kirk. Oh, no. Now I've caught up with where I started. Thank you for all of these. It really means a lot, and it really helps. Um... Sorry, I'm just figuring out where I left off. Oh, Jacob Sh Jacob Shakia for 320 yen. I don't think I've gotten yen before. That's awesome. Canada is definitely an economy of all time. <laughs> oh, yeah. You might say the economy here in Canada is one of the economies ever. Um, we're, we're economying pretty hard down here. Uh, thank you, Jacob. Captain Kirk for $2 says, activate, 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 activate. Great song. Um, I don't know the artist, but he must have a huge dick making a song that cool. Thank you, Captain Kirk. Gigapots for $10 since, says... Been a fan since early RB. Thanks for the entertainment over the years. Please spend this on something stupid. And then there's six exclamation marks. 
That's how badly he wants me to spend his money on something dumb. Well, th I'm sure I'll think of something sufficiently stupid to spend your money on. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of it is, like... Games, movies, booze... Hardware upgrades... And, like, sound packs. Like, a lot of hardware, software... And then just food and booze. It's basically it. But it helps, it keeps me going and it facilitates my brainstorming and coming up with stupid shit for ideas for shows and stuff. So I really appreciate everybody fueling that for me to keep going. Um, Henry K for two pounds says, love your work, bro. Your passion for film is great. I do love film. One of the mediums of all time. But that's just me. That's just what I think. That's just my onion, dude. That's just like my opinion, man. Keep Team Kiltacular for $5 says you've ruined my night job. I was supposed to get some writing done, but I'm so captivated by the dribble leaving your mouth. I can't look away. <laughs> I actually like doing that like I'll if I'm writing when I'm writing stuff I don't like to write in silence it kind of just makes me anxious and makes me feel kind of stuck I like listening to music or listening to something on YouTube where I'm not too obligated to pay attention like a podcast or something so, like, I could, I feel like I could listen to something like this and, like, somebody else doing the same sort of thing and also write at the same time. I feel like that wouldn't be a problem for me. I mean, obviously, it would mean not paying too much attention to what's being said. I guess that's the thing. Like, you want to hear what I have to say, which is, I mean, don't, because it's all useless drivel anyway. <laughs> There's plenty of other things that deserve your attention right now. Least of all me. But I really appreciate you tuning in and uh, your super chat. Thank you. Mr. Mans for 14 Australian dollars. Oh, yeah. From Australia. Kangaroos. Vegemite. Kangaroos slathered in Vegemite. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I like doing accents. Have you ever thought about learning to use Blender for your films as an alternative to Halo Machinima in the future? I know it's a difficult program to learn, but it would give you heaps more freedom. Yeah, it, it definitely did occur to me. Um, I mean, it's, it's... The workload goes way up with that freedom. Right, because you got to know how to animate and keyframe and, and all that shit. What's good about doing it actually in game is that all of that is handled, right? The animation of the characters moving from A to B. You don't have to keyframe or manually animate every limb of every fucking character rig in the scene. You know, the game takes so much of the load off, like doing it in game. Um, but me. You know, like, I like the idea of eventually using Blender to make something, yeah. Um, and I have used Blender before, so, like, I'm familiar with it. But I've only used it to build environments so far. And some basic lighting and, you know, um, uh, surface mapping, shit like that. I haven't really done, like, animation and characters in Blender before. I'm kind of familiar with with it but it's something that i'd really like i'd need to spend some time like learning that skill you know? uh thank you mr mans uh what's the what's the chat saying just wondering how everybody reacted to my australian stereotype <laughs> uh 
Just use MCC. Oh yeah, that's the meme. Just use Master Chief Collection, Lamau. Um... Okay, sorry. Back to Super Chats here. Where were we? I lost my spot. Sorry. Okay. John something for $10 says, Love what you do, John. Do you still make 8-bit tracks like how you did with the older RB seasons? Oh, yeah, because in Season 4, I made this 8-bit track that, in hindsight, I don't like it at all. Or hind hearing. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a fan. I thought those tracks were audibly ugly. Um, there were bits of them that were okay. The theme wasn't, ter the main theme that I did in 8-bit, I don't think was terrible but there were other 8-bit tracks that i made that were like bad i think um i'm not against using that sound again i'm actually one of the one of the instruments one of the digital instruments that i have has like a sort of 8-bit lead thing on it so i could make a track i mean it's got nothing to do with the instrumentation it's it's like i mean whether a track sounds bad or not it's just like the mel is it is the melody any good is it too repetitive that sort of thing it's not really about like what's the quality of the, in of the instruments you know like because you can make an 8-bit track that sounds awesome i just wasn't good enough at the time to make something good <laughs> guys sound like such a fucking idiot I can never get out. This that's never gonna change. I feel like I'm gonna be like 90 and still think the same thing of myself. It's just everything about everything that comes out of my mouth is just stupid shit. Or I feel like I'm not phrasing things right or well enough. Um. Yeah, I mean, I might make more 8-bit tracks. It's just, uh, but the important thing is just like having a good melody and making it not sound too repetitive and yeah um i lost my spot again sorry i go whenever i go to the fan funding page it's like it just resets the position to the bottom because i guess it's automatically going to the newest things um Ta uh, thank you, John something. Taylor Corbett for $2 says, Thanks for the stream and all the hard work. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm glad you enjoy it. Captain Kirk for $2 says, Shirtless stream? Well, it's got four likes on it. Because they, you can like, people can like Super Chats now. At least five people think I should do a shirtless stream. I might look buff right now, but as soon as this shirt comes off, I'm just like an ugly blob, okay? Of of fat. I've still got weight to lose. But I'm putting on muscle, which is good. Because I'm working out. <sighs> Beefcake! I'm working. It's a work in progress, okay? I'm not ready for a shirtless stream. This isn't fucking Magic Mike, okay? <laughs> I'm still schlubby. <clears throat> uh, but thank you. I wish I had that kind of body. I wish I had Jake Gyllenhaal's Roadhouse body. We all do. With fucking abs that you can grate cheese on. But I'm not quite there yet, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Let's move on. Masked Wizened for one dollar, no message. Six likes. <laughs> People approve of the no message. 
I guess, yeah, sure. Thank you for the $1 super chat. I really appreciate that. Honestly, like, just because there's no message, like, it's fine. Um, Team Kiltacular for $5 says, what's your process for writing the show? Oh, my God. <laughs> Where do you get your ideas from? <laughs> Oh, God. Where? Fucking hell. I mean, it's a fair question. It's just, it's just so, it's just so broad. My process of writing the show. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, you know? You have to be mentally ill for a start. <laughs> Just get a mental illness, and then it's just comes to you like that, no problem. I remember, oh, well, I didn't read your whole message, so maybe there's another part of this. I remember you wanted to wait until your scripts were near finality before heading into production. Well, yeah, I mean, that should be the fucking norm. But it isn't in Hollywood for whatever fucking stupid reason. I mean, I th I think... Call me crazy. I think scripts in Hollywood should be finalized before they go into production. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's pretty... I think that's a pretty fair statement. You know? Do we really want to be figuring out story beats when we're in the middle of a fucking set with cameras and people looking at their watches going, All right, what are we doing? We got to shoot something. We're losing daylight. Do we really want to be going over the script and figuring out story beats then? I mean, I'm not saying you can't throw out your plan. But, like, you got to go in with a plan, like a, a shootable script. Something that's written from start to finish. And, you know, maybe you come up with some ideas on the set in production, and then it's just like, okay, let's do that instead. At least you had a plan going in. You know? So. So, yeah. Um, I... It's not just that I want my scripts to be approaching finality. I want them to be done before I go into production because I take the screenwriting process seriously. As dumb as my projects are, I take the writing really seriously because I, I want the dialogue to be sharp. I want things to be snappy. I want the pacing to be good. You know, I want everything making sense and going in a a general direction that's guided by a theme or a set of themes that are respectable and then build up to a finale that's satisfying and then the kind of finale that makes people go like I'm glad I invested all this time watching this because that was worth it like I, w I want people to have that feeling when they watch my stuff so yeah I hate when I'm watching shows and I get the feeling that it's just being made up on as they're going along on the spot and it's just like you don't really know what you're doing with this do you i don't i hate when i feel like that when i'm watching shows so like i want to have as much as i can figured out beforehand before production um i hope that explains a little bit because getting into like the process of writing the show i mean that's a that's a huge subject i mean actually again um, I know it's cringe referring to paywalled content, but I did do a tutorial series where I spent like two hours talking about my writing process. So if you really want to see it, it's, it is there in a video form. Um, it's just too much to go into right now. Um, but I really appreciate your super chat. Thank you. I hope I didn't like, I saw you the initial part of your super chat there and I was just, it's just so you know, there's just so much to it. It's just like, oh, fuck. But, like, it's a fair question, so... I don't want you to feel bad or anything, you know? I like your question. It was a very cool question. <laughs> uh, thank you for your chat. Uh, Lucky XT7 for $10 says, Okay, John, I need my Sonic update. <laughs> 
What are your thoughts on Sonic Movie 3? Have you played Superstars or the Frontiers DLC? Also, I'm excited for Hard Justice. It's nice to get something new from you. Yeah, well, I mean, Hard Justice indeed was an old series of mine that I don't think I pulled off so well in the past. But, you know, I like the characters. I like the premise. I felt like I could do it better this time. Um, Sonic movie. Well, actually, I'm going to answer the other part first. Because I have some thoughts on the Sonic movies. Have you played Superstars or the Frontiers DLC? Super Oh, Sonic Superstars, right. That's like the four-player, like, Sonic game that they put out, the side-scrolling Sonic thing. No, I didn't play that. It looked interesting. It looked like kind of a step in the right direction. Just based on, like, what I personally want from the Sonic franchise. Um, but... I don't like the art style of it. It has all these, like, soft, rounded edges. And the music, I don't think, is nearly as, as good as it used to be. Like, the, uh, if you look, if you listen to the scores, like, the music for... Not just the Sonic Genesis games and Sonic CD, but also even um, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. They have fucking banging soundtracks. Like, they are awesome. Like, I listen to Sonic Adventure, the soundtrack, in my car when I'm driving to just, like, get groceries or whatever. The, it's, I mean, and the, the Genesis games, too. I mean, it's chiptune, but, like, it's, it's really good. And now, like, the, the music is never quite matched up to, like, the, the music isn't as good as it used to be. Music's not everything. Um, I mean, it's the gameplay is the important thing, right? But, like, art style as well is just a thing that bothers me with modern Sonic. A good example is um, Metal Sonic. The character Metal Sonic he has this design now, this modern design, where all his sharp edges have been rounded off. And he just looks like a soft pussy plushy. But if you look at the art of Metal Sonic, like back in the Sonic CD days, which is when he was introduced, he looks fucking badass and scary and with like really pointed edges and like... It's like, man, you don't want to fuck with that guy. But now he just looks like kind of this pussy-friendly robot. And it's just like, uh, I just, I just don't like the overall art style they're doing now. Because um, Sonic's supposed to have a bit of edge to it. You know? Like, it's part of his character. Like, even in the... the I remember at least in the Sega CD game, if you left him idle for too long, he would say, I'm out of here. And jump off the screen and give you a game over. Regardless of how many lives you have left. I think. Like even if you had like three lives for example. If you wait too long and he jumps off. You mean you can pause it. But if you leave it unpaused. He'll be like I'm out of here. And then jump off the screen and you get a game over. Like I always thought that was so cool. Because it was like fitting for his character. Like interesting little gameplay things like that. Like, he's supposed to be kind of an edgy character. Um, anyway, I, I don't know. I haven't tried Superstars yet, but it, it looks okay. I would prefer that, playing that over, like... Because I remember I played Generations, and that that game is like the equivalent of a stroke to me, where I hate half of it. And the other half is, like, pretty cool. I love the the side-scrolling half. But then anytime you have to play as modern Sonic with, like, the modern camera perspective and style of gameplay, I'm just like, ugh. I don't want to do this, but I gotta do one of, another one of these before I can get to the next level that has, like, the side-scrolling part. Um. Anyway, yeah, that's... Uh, that's my thoughts on, um, what was it? 
Superstars, yeah. Frontiers DLC, no. I mean, I haven't even... I played Frontiers, but I haven't touched the DLC, whatever. I don't even know what it is. Frontiers, I was really underwhelmed by. Which, like, it had, like, overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, and then I played it. I'm just like, this isn't that good. To I mean, personally, that was just my feelings on it. People enjoy it, that's fine. But I was just like, Sonic's been way better than this before. Um, and then the movies. Um, I know some people are probably getting bored, me just doing super chats, but I mean, this, I feel like this is the show. So like, if you're not, if you don't like it now, then I see a bunch of people like, <laughs> there's some people in the chat. They're just like coordinating to like leave like two disgruntled people at a music concert saying, these guys suck. You want to just get out of here? <laughs> If you want to go, that's cool. Um, but I feel like this is just going to be the whole thing, so... I mean, what did you join for, if not this? Me talking about stupid shit. Um, the Sonic movies... I don't dislike them as much as I thought I was going to. I mean... I think everybody was on edge when they saw that initial design come out. You know, everyone with, like, the teeth and all of that. <laughs> People are just like, what? What is this? What are you doing? And then we're like, oh, okay, we'll fix them. Um, but then at that point, it was just like, do you really know what you're doing with this character? But then the first movie came out, and, you know, I, I don't like the human stuff in it. Like, the human B-plot, whatever you want to call it. But, like, I actually like the execution of Sonic the Hedgehog in that movie as a character. And then I actually quite liked the second one as well. I mean, it had sort of the same problem of like the the human character dynamics just fe feeling like like an obstacle. It just felt like in the way of like the the Sonic and Tails story. But like whenever it was just Sonic and Tails and Knuckles, I was actually really with it. Like. And I had a pretty st straightforward and compelling through line, you know, of like finding and getting the Master Emerald. And then I had like a cool little finale with Eggman and his death robo. And then he had, and then Supersonic comes around. Like, that was all right. I didn't mind that so much. And then Sonic 3, um, I think it risks going into like sort of edgelordy territory with the introduction of Shadow. I hope they pull that off well enough, because I don't... I don't dislike Shadow. I actually like that character. But then, the games that came out where, like, he has a gun all of a sudden, just I feel like really shattered that the image of that character. Where people were just, like, writing him off as just pure edgelord cringe. But, um, it, if you look at if you just look at Shadow and Sonic Adventure 2, I think his anger is actually quite justified and interesting. Because he is sort of created... I mean, it's like Eggman is constantly trying to like make a version of Sonic that he can control, right? At first it was Metal Sonic, and then that didn't work. So it's just like, what, what do I do now? Oh, what if I clone Sonic? And it, it's just like an organic Sonic that I can control. But then all of a sudden with that comes like this idea of free will where it's just like, what, why am I here just to do what you want to be better than this other creature? Like, is this my life's purpose? And then he's sort of like justifiably angry about that. Uh, and then Son the Sonic Adventure 2 story culminates in this quite cool dynamic where Sonic and Shadow realize they're both on the side of good and they want to make the world a better place and use their abilities for good. I mean, they're different personalities, but they're sort of, they have that overlap and then they end up working together. I thought that was really cool, despite, you know, Robotnik's initial purposes for creating him and Shadow's initial anger. I like what eventually happens at the end of um, Sonic Adventure 2. So, if, like, the if the Sonic 3 movie takes advantage of that and doesn't make Shadow too, like, 
cringy edgelord or give him a gun and shit? They probably won't. Um, they'll probably, I imagine they'll stray away from that. But, uh, there's a lot of potential there for a sweet Sonic movie. In fact, I was thinking of that, actually. Think I was thinking about Sonic 3, and I was thinking, like, if I were to make a Sonic movie, which I would really like to, by the way, if I was in that position, what would it be about? And I think I would actually have Metal Sonic and Shadow in the same movie. And then have this sort of triangle dynamic between Sonic and then his two replicants. And then one is, like, full-on robot, and one is, like... One is a like an organic clone. There's an interesting juxtaposition to there, and I feel like there's a story you can tell there about like the real thing versus something that's entirely robotic. And but then within between Sonic and Shadow, what's real and what isn't? What makes somebody real? You know, like if sh if Shadow figures out like I'm a clone of Sonic. So I'll always be inferior. Well, is that really how it works? I mean, Shadow's a person of his own. Like, he can... He can make something respectable of his life, just like sh just like Sonic, the original Sonic the Hedgehog, can. Um, I think there's a really interesting dynamic between those three characters there that could make for a cool movie. I don't know exactly what Sonic 3, the movie's doing. I don't think it'll have Metal Sonic in it. I expect they're just gonna do, like, Shadow... I don't even know if they're doing, like, if they're just doing a retread of the Sonic Adventure games at this point. Or if they're, te they're telling an entirely new story with Shadow. Like, like if, Son if Sonic 3, the movie, has Shadow in it, are they going to have Rouge? Are they going to have whatever that robot was? Um, you know, there's a bunch of characters that come along with Shadow's introduction in Sonic Adventure 2. And, um, I wonder what they'll do with that. But, oh, anyway, I thought Sonic 1 and 2, the movies, were all right. And, um, I'm looking forward to the third one. I hope it's not, um, I hope it's, I want it to be good. If it at least makes me feel the way Sonic, if it at least entertains me, it entertains me the way Sonic 2 did then I'll be happy. Um, but yeah. That was my TED talk on Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, he's the ultimate life form because he could use a gun. <laughs> Brilliant. Ah, so it's the Super Chat show. What the fuck do you want me to do? They're all here. I mean, I got to get to them at some point. I mean, I have a list. But, like, in doing these Super Chats, I'm covering a number of things that I already had on my list anyway. So, I mean, this is the show. So, I mean, if you don't want to listen to it, the X button is there, okay? Isn't Shadow meant to be edgy? I don't think it was entirely about that in... Like, his introduction in Sonic Adventure 2, it wasn't just about having an edgy character. I think there was actually an interesting idea there about creating a clone of who Robotnik regarded as the ultimate life form. And then he's just like, I'm going to create the ultimate life form on its own. But then it's like he's tapped into a question he doesn't even fully understand, despite his genius. You know, it's just like, what what is the ultimate life form? What makes a life form ultimate? You know? Anyway. Uh, Sonic Mania was the shit, though. I agree. Sonic... Sonic Mania... I'm not saying... I didn't... I don't think I said Sonic Mania was bad. Um, Sonic Mania was my f favorite thing to come out of Sega recently. I mean, it's not entirely Sega. I mean, it's mostly thanks to Christian Whitehead and his team. Um, who I think started off making, like, ports, like, so port PC ports of, like, the Genesis and Sega CD games. What I, what I would love as a new Sonic game 
is basically just Sonic Mania with new all new stages and new material instead of just like doing old levels. I mean, I love that in Sonic Mania. I love playing like Lava Reef Zone and shit like and hearing all that music again and the nostalgia trip, but it's it's just like, okay, we did that. Now let's do a Sonic Mania where it's just all new shit. You know? New stages, new sprites, maybe new characters, I don't know. You don't want to change things up too much, but just just new levels and new music is what I really want. Um Triple Trouble 16 bit. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. I heard about somebody told me about that when I was playing Resident Evil 4 that there was a PC version of Triple Trouble. Uh wasn't I didn't see that coming. Cause that's like a so they turned it 16-bit, because it was originally an 8-bit game. I really like that game on Game Gear, so... That'll be cool. Uh, anyway. We'll get back to... We'll get back to the Super Chats here. Where were we? So yeah, I hope that... Thank you, Lucky XT7. I hope that sufficiently answered your questions about my thoughts on Sonic the Hedgehog. There you go. That was my TED Talk on Sonic. So thank you for that. John Something for $10 says, One thing that helps with music production is to listen to songs and try to focus on specific melodies and instruments. The composer for Undertale just uses free 8-bit plugins and sound fonts on Fruity Loops. Yeah, that's that sounds like a lot. A lot like my process, to be honest. Um, yeah, definitely lis listening to... Specifically listening to the type of songs that you want to make. Like variations on it. And going, okay, what what is it about this that I like? What is it about that track that I like? And sort of coming up with new melodies based on what you're hearing that you like. And then mixing and matching different things that you're hearing in in different songs yeah and then just using very basic software and plugins like yeah I'm, I'm all about that that's i mean i got i've gotten some i've expanded on my library of like sound material to work with but really you can you can you can get a lot done just with very bare bones stuff like free plugins like sq8l or synth one and then just plug those into something like Fruity Loops or whatever sequence, sequencer you want to use and just paint notes and fuck around. And you can make something surprisingly decent with just like free basic stuff. Like either free plugins or stuff that's already built into the sequencer anyway once you get it. So, yeah. Don't feel intimidated from experimenting with it just because you haven't paid hundreds of dollars on like some crazy vst or sound pack you know because you can do a lot with just free stuff um it's all about the notes it's all about the feeling you know that has nothing to do with this specific sound packs that you have um thank you john something Acre 9 for $4 says, One Life Remaining intro song was awesome. I don't even remember what it was. Uh, like, I can't even hear it in my head. I forget. But I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Um, Fanimations for four ninety nine says, Hey, John, have you played Persona 3 Reload? It's on Game Pass. I really like the soundtrack, especially Changing Seasons, original Persona 3 OST is good. I haven't played any of the Persona games or Shin Megami Tensei or anything, but I've seen a bunch of gameplay. I know people really like it. I've seen some clips of cutscenes and stuff. It looks interesting. It's just, you know, it's just another one of those things that's good, but I haven't gotten around to it. Um, thank you, Fanimations. Noko Kusovai for two Australian dollars says kangaroos and cowboy hats, mate. I'm from Britain. Oh, Britain. That's not Australia. What are you sending me Australian dollars for if you're from Britain? Shenanigans. <laughs> I call shenanigans on this. Uh, thank you, Noko. I appreciate it. Masked Wizened 
for five dollars says scowl at the camera with casual derision you've been asked this but why are you still using reach and not something more recent for halo i made a whole video about this dude and i've talked a bit about this on previous streams okay so if you really want to know check out my making machinima video um it's like a couple hours long, which I'm sure you'll jump right into. I'm sure that's a very attractive video length. Oh yeah, I, I want to listen to John drone on about fucking 15-year-old game for two hours. Let's go. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I did explain my reasoning in detail in that video, so if you really want to know, it's there. I'm, ge I'm gathering the scowl at the camera with casual derision part was meant to be an asterisk, like that's something you're doing. Unless you're asking me to do it, which seems kind of weird. Um, thank you, Mast Wizened. Squadala, man, the wind rammer. <laughs> Where the fuck do you get some of these names? I swear to Christ. Squadala, man, the wind rammer for $10 cents says... Is that a superhero? <laughs> what even is that? Um, will you ever go back to side scrollers, providing the government the goobermint does not shut it down completely? Also, your season six, seven songs are better than you say they are. I I don't uh, I don't dislike. All of my season six and seven stuff. I think some of it's okay. Some of it's not. Definitely better overall than the stuff I was making for season four and five. There's a bit of a, an improvement, but there's. I think with six and seven, there is a marked improvement in the quality of the tracks, even though I still had a lot to learn at that point. Um, but thank you. I'm glad you like them. Will I ever go back on to side scrollers? I'm always happy to go back on to side scrollers. The it just comes down to whether or not they invite me on. That's it. And if if they do, I'll happily go back on. I feel like I'm kind of boring anyway. I'm surprised the uh, I'm surprised EFAP invite me on as much as they do. Cause I I I kind of I feel like dumb and not confident in what I'm saying a lot of the time. Um, but I, I'm glad people like listening to me and, and, uh, I hope I haven't outstayed my welcome on EFAP. I worry about maybe I'm on too much and people are getting tired of me and shit, but like, I'm always happy to go on whatever show I get invited on to, man. Smaller just keeps asking me to come on and I'm just like, yeah, dude, sure. I like talking to those guys, you know? So... Um, so yeah, thank you, Squadala, man. I appreciate that. Lord Coventry for $2 says, why use Reach when you can use GoldenEye N64? Great question. Hmm. Um. Yeah, GoldenEye, I mean, you know, it's, f it's funny. Sometimes, like, I've, I've used, like, debug things. Like, there's this debug mode that you can initiate with, um, Ocarina of Time. I forget how I did it. But, like, it might be through emulation specifically, I think. But there's a way to, like, get it to work so you can control the in-game camera and keyframe it and move it around and keyframe things like f field of view, not just position. But it's, like, it, it was incredibly difficult to work with, um... And I don't, I don't think, I'm not sure the same thing is possible with Goldeneye. Um, maybe, I don't know, but, I mean, I know it's a joke question, but it just made me think of, like, there are sometimes, like, you can gain access to debug tools that actually let you manipulate the in-game camera in something like an N64 game. Um, but the interface was awful, so, yeah. I mean, Reach is very easy to work with, fortunately. It's one of the reasons I like using it. Um, anyway, thank you, Lord Coventry. Appreciate that. 
Filthy Casual for $5 says, My channel hit about 600 subs from the Halo show being bad. <laughs> Thanks for the inspiration. RB in chief is more Halo than the show we got. Keep it up, bud. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on 600 subs, man. Um, I mean, I know it's it seems like a small number relative to everyone else that's successful on YouTube, but uh, don't give up, dude. Six 600 is... If you're just starting out, like it's hard, man. It's hard, and it, it's just getting harder and harder because it's just it's just more and more fucking content. There's too much content now, and you have all these really talented be talented people trying to make a name for themselves, and it's just so fucking hard to come out even into the realm of visibility. Um, so congratulations on your subs, man. That's cool, and um. Yeah, I wish the Halo show was better, but whatever. Um, I know what you mean about RB and the Chief being more Halo, because I think, like, even though RB and the Chief is, like, a parody on the characters and, like, the way people play that game, I think baked into it is an understanding of what Halo is and what people like about Halo, that the the real television show isn't really like grasping you know because it's just like it seems like they want to do their own thing and it's like why that so it baffles me like oh we're here we're, we're we got this we got the rights to this pre-existing ip that everyone loves but we're gonna do our own thing what do you mean <laughs> everyone likes the original thing for a reason so it's just like, if you want to do something new, then n make a new thing. What are you doing grabbing something else that everyone else is familiar with and then changing it? Anyway. I don't know what they're thinking. EFAP needs the exposure job they're using you. You are fucking kidding, right? They got way more subs and views than me. I mean, I'm I'm quite thankful that that they're have they're willing to have me on as often as I'm on there. Like, I mean, I'm I'm quite happy to do it. I just hope the audience isn't tired of me. You stream too much? Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'll go back in my cave after this. I promise. I won't talk to anybody for another month. Um, you look like a chess master. I don't even know what... Is that a look? I heard my grandfather's last, last breath. It sounded like his very being leaving his body. Jesus I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but like... Fucking hell. <laughs> That's just like heavy just out of nowhere. Oh no, wait, hold on. I'm kind of missing a uh primer for the discussion, some talk about whether or not people have souls. And th I guess this is what happens, right, when I'm too fucking boring is that you all start talking about your own little stories and shit. Um I'm sorry for laughing there. It was just, I just, I, I saw that and it just seemed like out of nowhere. It was quite heavy. Um, did I miss a super chat? Oh no, it's, oh yeah, fuck. There's a hundred dollar one, but it wasn't listed in the fan funding page because it's still on like the sort of, I, d I don't even know how to articulate this, but you know how like super chats have a lifespan, they have like an HP bar <laughs> and they lose HP and then after the HP is zero, then it gets like sorted into like the, the fan funding accumulation of super chats um 
but it, it doesn't get sorted into that page until like the the life bar on it is zero so like the 99 was just hanging there i thought i was eventually going to run into it on like the page because i had seen it there but like i'll just get to it now um it's from francisco r i mean a huge amount i really appreciate that thank you um it's very nice of you john i've been re-watching your podcast episodes all the way from the beginning again yes see me after class too Oh, that stinky old show? This show's way better than that. They really help me feel less alone in the world filled with bullshit. Thank you for being real, and I'm glad you're still kicking, guy. Listen. Uh, I'm happy to do what I do. I'm just happy people enjoy it, and uh, you're very nice for have for having given me that. That's, uh, that's a lot of money to send. And, uh... I deeply appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I'll... I don't see myself stopping making content for... I mean, I just like doing it, you know? So, I don't really want to do anything else. If I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be doing... Um, tech support. Or maybe game design. I need a fucking idea first. I mean, I've got ideas, but I need something like something I can work with, some, you know, so I can actually enter production on that. But like, I'm still brainstorming. It's something I'd like to do eventually is make a game. But yeah, if I wasn't doing that or content creation, I'd probably just be fixing people's computers and shit, which I would be quite happy doing that too. But like, if I had to pick, I would prefer making shows and shit. So. I just like doing it, you know? Um, actually, it was $99.99. Oh, shit. That's right. There was, there was another 99 cents on that $99. Babe, wake up. John is live. <laughs> wake up your girlfriends. John's online. Um, did job miss the hundred? No, don't know. No, no, I, I just read it. Um, so Francisco R, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, I promise I will piss it away on something really stupid. <laughs> you have my word. Um, Solar Hypercane for four ninety nine says, "Do you know how you're gonna explain making RB and the Chief to Saint Peter at the Pearly Gates, John? What, am I gonna have to? Is Saint Peter not a fan of the show or something? He's gonna look at it on his fucking phone there, <laughs> on his heaven phone that God gave him, and he's gonna look at my show and be like, what the fuck? Can you mind explaining this, John? Now that you're dead." Why did you make this show? Why did you really think this was a good idea? This is what you spent all your time on? Is making this dumb fucking show with toys? Oh, look at me. I, I, I got action figures and I'm fucking... I can film them. Look, I'm making a movie, guys. Oh, look at me. <laughs> you thought that was a great way to spend your life? We gave you the gift of life. And this is how you spent it. Yes. What do you want me to do? I'm making people laugh. I'm bringing smiles onto the faces of... of, of everyone who tunes in. People need art, even if it's stupid. I'm grateful that art exists. People make art. I ingest a lot of art. And I'm grateful that it exists, you know, because it inspires me and informs my, me making my own art. And it's one of the reasons to keep on living, you know, is to see what people make. You know, beautiful, interesting things. Because otherwise, what are you going to do without art? Sit around, look, standing around looking at trees and shit. <laughs> 
Because that's going to get old. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably just tell him, look, I I did the most entertaining thing I could th I could think of with the tools at my fingertips, and I just, just took advantage of it, you know? Um, where was I? Thank you, Solar Hypercane, for four ninety nine. I appreciate that. That's his username, by the way. Solar Hypercane for four ninety nine. dollars This is full alias decimator omega for five dollars says hey john halo 2 online for the og xbox is back via insignia yeah i heard about that see you know people say this is super chats the show now i get it haha -ha. but i had that written down on my list of things to talk about and now here we're talking about it now because somebody brought it up so um so yeah so, the way I think it works, I haven't tried it out yet, but I think, if I'm understanding it right, you can just bring out the original hardware, perhaps even just load up Halo 2 on Xbox 360, because I think it has the backwards compatibility for that. And then if you... I'm guessing you, you just plug your console into your local network as if you were going to play xbox live and then as long as you have a pc running on the same network with the i guess insignia tool or third-party software or whatever installed on there that sort of record that will recognize your console plugged into your local network and then trick your console into thinking it's on the xbox live servers when it's actually directing the traffic to whatever insignia's server setup is and they have essentially rebooted the the halo 2 xbox live experience which i think is pretty awesome i haven't tried it yet like i said but um i like that people are doing that i like it when um people bring back old popular online games that have been discontinued it reminds me of um resident evil outbreak you know eventually that stopped getting official support and so people took it upon themselves just to create their own servers and then they create like a, a third party tool that manipulates your console into thinking it's joining official servers when it's actually like a third party thing. Um, I imagine, I mean, I don't know how sophisticated this server system is that they have. I imagine, especially since the, this project is in its infancy, the lag is probably an issue. But that's probably something they can fix over time. If maybe it's addressed already, I'm not sure. But I suspect it would be laggy, but I imagine a lot of people would just be happy that that experience is even, like, back. Network tunneling, yeah. So it's it's kind of like the X-Link. I mean, it just, it differs from, like... Because I remember doing that same sort of thing with Halo Combat Evolved online, but the th Halo Combat Evolved didn't have official Xbox Live support, or any Xbox Live support. What it's interesting about Halo 2 is that it has Xbox Live built into it, um, or access to the Xbox Live servers in the form of, of like an official live option. Uh, but then, like... I mean, I guess it, it basically is the same thing where like these third party tools back in the day were tricking your console with Halo Combat Evolved on it into thinking that it was on a system link LAN, but now it's just tricking your console into thinking it's on a Xbox Live WAN when it's actually you're just connecting to a third party thing. Yeah, so I, I guess it's just basically the same thing. Um. But yeah, anyway, I, anyway, like, I've been meaning to try that. It sounds cool. Listen. Listen. All right? The time has come. It's embarrassing. But I gotta pee. All right? That's just the way it is. I have to empty urine from my bladder, you guys. So, I am going to take a quick pee break. And then I will be back. And we will resume chats. We'll finish those off. 
And then um, I'll look at my list and see if there's anything else that I think is funny or stupid or whatever, and then we'll talk about that, okay? So just give me a second to go pee. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna make sure we're on the right screen here. Hi, we're back. The cringe continues. Where were we? Um, so Decimator Omega, thank you very much for that. Yeah, Halo 2 Online seems cool. I wouldn't mind trying that out. I wonder if you can... I imagine you can do that on an Xbox 360, right? And I, I don't think you... I think what's confused me about it is... You, you don't need an Xbox Live account, do you? For that project? Because you are... I'm just wondering how, like, the... I don't, I don't know how it works, but like, cause I know Xbox live, I mean, obviously it's a server, a service that's still going on, but the servers for X Halo two are dead. And I know like you're playing on fan created servers, but does it still need you to have an Xbox live account? to like log on to it or do you need an account with them and then that sort of sp an account with them will spoof an xbox live account on the system that you're playing on i wonder if that's how it works but anyway um hmm Wash your hands. I did, okay? I'm just fast. Okay? Soap, water, boom. Done. I'm not like, hmm, let's have some soap. Okay? And then let's turn the tap. And then let's just have a good rinse for two minutes. <laughs> like, it doesn't need to be that long, okay? I can do things quickly. Of course, we, we all know I don't actually wash my hands. I just lick them clean. I know you need the latest version of the dashboard to get it to work. Yeah, but what dashboard is that? Are you talking about 360 or the original Xbox?
probably 360, right? So they they expect everyone to be emulating Halo 2 on the 360 hardware to get to get that thing going. I don't fucking know. Whatever. Um Squadala man the wind rammer for fourteen fourteen dollars and eighty eight cents. Are you kidding me? Did you really like The Last of Us Part Two Electric Boogaloo or were you just saying that shit to troll? No, I actually really did like that game. I know a bunch of you are like reeing right now, but like I don't care. I enjoyed that game. I don't think it's nearly as bad as people say it is. Also, you better say that price right, coward. Much love from Ontario. Oh, yeah, because it's just about... Let's get him to say the meme number. <laughs> because, ha ha. <laughs> um, yeah, oof, yikes. Whatever. I don't care. Fuck off. <laughs> I, like, I like that game. I'm allowed to like it. It's not against the law. Believe it or not. Um, yeah, I actually did really enjoy it. I can see, like, I've moved in a few spots regarding it, where I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, they could have done that better, or it's weird that the game didn't have that, or that could have been done better, or... Um, I think the biggest thing I've moved on is just like this idea of forgiveness at the end of the game when at that point you've killed brutally how many people including in cutscenes so it's like even if you did like a pacifist run where you didn't kill anybody there's still cutscenes where like you have to kill somebody i remember the first thing that comes to mind is that girl that's playing hotline miami on her psp and you like stick a knife in her throat like there's no getting around that that's like a cutscene it's a scripted event so it's just like you know what about her haven't you just started the whole cycle of violence again with that one person and the countless amount of others that you killed along the way to like finding abby i get that stupid part of it you know um but i don't hate it I kind of like its broad message about putting yourself in the shoes of your greatest opponent, who you per who you perceive to be your nemesis, and sort of realizing that everybody's fighting their own battle. There's something about that message that I thought was really welcome in a time that's so like polarizing. I was just like, hmm, like I yeah, I get what the game is doing, and. I respect it. Um, but yeah, there's things like in on the level of execution where it's just like, well, that doesn't work, you know. But uh, I just appreciated what the game overall was trying to do. Um, and I really, I actually really enjoyed my first playthrough. And I thought the. Um, it had a distinctly thick and heavy and depressing atmosphere, which I realize is not for everybody. Like, not everyone's going to like that. But I actually like that sort of thing. I was impressed by how miserable the game made me feel. <laughs> you know? And that's obviously not going to be to everyone's liking. Some people are going to fucking hate that. And, like, I get it. I don't have a problem with people disliking the game. I understand why people hate it. When where I when I get pissed off, it's like people have a problem with me liking the game. That pisses me off. And she's like, why? I'm just saying that I liked it. You don't have to like it. So <laughs> you know? Uh, whatever. I would like to play through it again. That's something I would a game I would actually like to stream and I think would probably be might be some interesting material that comes out of that, you know, like playing that with a live audience, reacting to all the beats of it. 
Um, anyway. Liking it is cringe. Yeah, okay. Right. You're right. I'm wrong. Sorry. Um, let's move on. Where were we? Thank you, Squadala the Wind Ram Squadala Man the Wind Rammer. Justin Quinn for five dollars says hype for hard justice. It's written in Leet Speak with numbers and shit there. Um I'm glad you're excited for it. Thank you. Simon S for four pounds and twenty pence. Oh no no no, that's not pounds, that's euros, sorry. What's a penny in euro currency? Is it just pennies? Cents? Pence? Much love from Munich, John. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Tobias Edwardson for 59 NOK. I still can't remember the name of that currency. John, do you want to join my trip to Thailand and go on a ladyboy safari? <laughs> Do you dare to ride a Boeing 737 MAX 8 for 12 butt-fucking hours? <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? A lady boy safari? Um, yeah, I don't know. I might pass on that. What's the significance of a Boeing 737 MAX 8? Is that exclusive to Thailand or something? Norwegian Kronor. Oh, okay. Kronor? That sounds like a Marvel supervillain, like Thanos or something. Kronor, the destroyer! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Someone who called out Boeing was found dead. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. So that's what you're referring to. Okay. Um, yeah, that was weird. Nothing. Just don't ask questions about Boeing. <laughs> well, John, those are the flying death traps. Do they have that reputation now, Boeing? I mean, I did hear about, like, the insider who got, like, a, um dealt with, <laughs> killed, or whatever the fuck happened to him. Uh, I didn't realize that it was, they're like an unsafe um, manufacturer now. Stop looking into things, John. It won't end well, okay? I'll stop looking and asking questions. I'm not curious at all. Um, Where were we? Thank you, Tobias. Los Time for $2 says, John, just use MCC. Lamau. 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 Just use Master Chief Collection. Lamau. Don't use Reach Lamau. Just use the new Halo Lamau. 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 Um. Well. If you want to take some time from your lamowing, you can check out my video where I explain my entire uh, reasoning for using Halo Reach on the 360 as opposed to Master Chief Collection. Okay. Um, all right. Curtain Rod. Thank you, Lost Time. Curtain Rod for five dollars says, "Still waiting for Jabussy reveal. Can't handle the Jabussy. Okay, you will come violent, violently in your pants the minute you see it, and you won't be able to stop. You'll have to go to the hospital. Is that what you want to happen? Hmm. You want to just." bask in the glory of my jabussy for e even just a single second you will start coming and you won't be able to stop you just be like constant orgasm might sound go might sound cool but imagine forever a never-ending orgasm where you're just constantly at peak you're going oh 
just for forever. That would be you forever doing that forever. No one can help you. There's no cure. Even if you go to the hospital, they're not going to be able to do anything. It's just like, oh, well, he's just, he's just going to do this now forever. Oh! <laughs> This is your life now, okay? They can't even prescribe anything. It's just like, well, you're just gonna have to live with it. You know, try and live a good life. <laughs> Do what you can. <laughs> you're not gonna be able to hold a conversation with anybody because you're gonna be so busy coming really hard. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Sorry. That's gross, John, and inappropriate. Um thanks, Kurt and Rod. Just keep don't hold your breath for that jabussy. Christian DeRamio for twenty dollars says I'm glad to catch one of your live streams. I always enjoy listening to them. What new games have you been playing lately? Would you ever try Baldur's Gate 3? It's great to play with friends. You know, I would fucking love to just sit and play games for a couple days. But I just, I haven't had time. I've just been doing the, like, I'll do, like, a couple, a few days out of this month. I had people ask me, like, They'll ping me on Discord saying, hey, we're playing Helldivers, you want to jump in? And I'll be like, yeah, I'll play for an hour or two, sure. And I'll do that. But other than that, it's just like, okay, back to work, you know? Because, like, it's, it takes so much fucking time just recording shots for Hard Justice and like, doing some editing. and Because every time, like, I record a scene, I try and, like, that same night, if I have time... I'll ingest all that footage into my editor, Premiere, and then I'll do, like, an assembly cut of that scene on the timeline, where it's just, like, these are the basic shots that are going to be used, and I'll maybe put some, uh, like, a music track over top, where it's just, like, I, f I think I'm probably going to score the, mu the scene with this track. Maybe not, but whatever, it's there just as sort of a reference, like a thing to consider. I can take it out or keep it in, whatever I decide to do ultimately. But yeah, like I, I once when I've shot a scene on a certain day and then like edited it all like that takes me way late into the night. And then it's just like, OK, I'm going to bed now. Like I don't have time for games at the moment. You know, and it's just hard. It's hard switching off. And the only time I don't feel it too bad playing games is if I'm like streaming and getting some content out of it. But even then, it's just like in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I could be getting some shots done right now, you know? So it's, it's just a hard thing to balance, you know? I've just kind of accepted right now that I'm just not playing video games and I'm just, I'm just working, you know? Um, so yeah, I haven't played much. I've, the most I've played this month is Helldivers 2, but, like, um, I'm not even, like, high level on that game. I'm only, like, level 7 or 8. Like, I'm still a cadet. And then everyone I play with, play with is fucking level 35 or some Gosu shit, where it's just like, fuck, I'm just gonna, like, hold you guys back, because, like, I'm not really entirely sure what I'm doing yet. Um, I like Helldivers, though. It's cool. So we, as I find it a little bit repetitive, the whole gameplay loop, but it's the kind of game where it's just like, like, it's just repetitive enough where it's like, you play it for a few hours on a particular day and then it's like, okay, I've had enough of that now, but then tomorrow or a few days from now, I'll load it up again and then I'll have fun again. You know, I like, I like that. It's not like WoW, where it just wants you to play, like, fucking forever and ever and ever, you know? Like, um, and plus, because it's a live service game, 
it gets periodically injected with like new surprising shit like the mechs for example and new weapons and then I'll, there's also like this sort of dungeons and dragons element to it where you have like a dungeon master who's sort of making these decisions that affect gameplay that are based on like the lore of the the universe that the game takes place in which i think is actually quite cool um i mean it's no wonder it's doing so well financially i mean um yeah hell, hell divers is cool um fuck i mean i got i've i got phantom liberty the cyberpunk dlc i was quite excited to go through that but i've barely touched it like i'm not even done the first little part of it because i just haven't had time i've just been working so i would i would like to set some time aside to just like get some get a, a sweet amount of gaming in you know but then i just feel bad because people are paying me to like to work you know so don't get me wrong i'm happy to do it it's just kind of sucks because like i do want to play these games but there's just too there's just too much other shit more important shit to do um but anyway i played a little bit of celeste See, that, that's the thing, like, based on, like, my schedule and how much I work, I like games that I can just, like, jump in and do, like, just play for, like, a half hour of just something that doesn't, there's no, like, bullshit with, like, setting it up or, like, waiting for, like, a, like, you know, there's no, like, matchmaking or, like, character configuration or some bullshit that just slows everything down. Like, I like games that you can just jump in and just start playing. Celeste is cool. I'll I'll even fire up, like, you know, Tetris. Like, I, I like playing Tetris Effect Connected, I think it's called. I'll fire that up and I'll play a few rounds of that. That's fun. I like just pick up and play shit. You know, you don't have to fuck around. Um, did he talk about Pal World? No, I didn't mention Pal World yet, but I know about it. I get it. Um, I talked about it on Side Scrollers, if you want to hear my thoughts on it. I did an episode with, um, Side Scrollers about, part of the discussion was Pal World. I feel like I said everything I had to say on that there, because I still haven't played it myself, but I'm aware of, like, the whole Pokemon with guns thing, and Nintendo's not entirely happy, but it's just like, whatever, too bad, because they haven't actually, they haven't stolen anything. Like, if, if there's any infringement, it, like I said on side scrollers, it would probably be based on some of the Pokemon designs. But even then, I don't think Nintendo has any sort of ground to make a legal case against Pal World. I mean, there are certainly similarities. The whole framework of having, like, creatures out there that you can catch and you have your own team of creatures that you pit against other teams. And then I've even seen parts of, like, the Pal World interface where it has, like, the box system for storing pals. Pals instead of Pokemon, you know. Box one, box two, box three, that's straight out of Pokemon. So it's like it's like, okay, you 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 are definitely inspired by Pokemon, but I don't think there's anything in there that's gonna give Nintendo a legal case to like sue them. You know what I mean? But anyway. Uh John, what what mouse do you use? Um I got a I got a Corsair. With, like, the the numpad on the left. Which, um... The only annoying thing about it is that I often have my thumb by default on the one. And then when I'm, like, concentrating hard on something, sometimes I'll accidentally press the one. And do a command that I don't want to, but, like... Other than that, I love having all this functionality on the side of the mouse. 
I had bought a new mouse not too long before this, actually, but the wheel was fucked up. It kept getting dirty. Like, every day I would be blowing on it, like, <sighs> trying to get the dust out from under the wheel. Because it was like, I, I would scroll the wheel down, but then it, it goes up on the document. And it's just like, what the fuck? Like, why are you not working properly, you know? So I got a new one. Dust, whatever. Shit gets stuck in there. And that's, it interferes with, like, the little laser thing that's, that, whatever, the, the mouse, whatever the mouse wheel sort of works with to sort of map, like, an XY coordinate onto the cursor. There's something caught in there that just, um, I don't know, it's particles or something, some bullshit. Come, yeah, it's probably come, that's what it is. You guys got it figured all out, don't you? You guys got all the answers. Um. Can you give it? Could you give us a soy face? It's like the so the soy jack face when they're people are excited about something. There you go, soy face for you. Um, we're, we're almost done super chats. Let's try and finish these off. Thank you, Christian DeRamio. I really appreciate it. $20, that's, uh, that's very generous. L.E. for two Australian dollars says, John, Halo Season 2, quick review, please. Oh, man. I already talked about it a little bit, but, I mean, I've only seen the first two episodes, so I can't... I don't think I'm really in a position to, like, break it down yet. But I'm not impressed so far from what I've seen. Um, It seems like they're doubling down on the Chief having no helmet thing. Which, I mean, if you can at least create a scenario where he doesn't need to have his helmet on, I mean, at least that's something, you know? One of the problems with the first season is that he would take his helmet off when he's on, was he, he's in the middle of fucking battle. It's like, what are you doing? I mean, never mind the protection, but just like, you've got all that, you've got the radar on there too. You've got all this like AR info that's coming at you that you need the helmet on to ingest. Like, don't you want to see, be able to see all that in real time? And, and no, but no, the audience must see my face. So the helmet comes off and then all of a sudden I'm losing all that combat data and I might potentially get ambushed. Like, it's just dumb. But if you're telling a story about Master Chief where it's just like, okay, he doesn't need the helmet here. I mean, I kind of get it. I'm actually on board with that. I'm not one of these people that's just like, he needs to have his helmet on, like, all the time, constantly. I would rather it stayed off most of the time. But you can write scenes where it can come off, and then that's, and that's fine, I think. But anyway, I haven't seen nearly enough of it, so one of these days I'm just going to binge the whole thing, because I have to if I'm going to talk about it later on uh, every frame of pause, probably. Um... I am actually interested, just personally, just to see where they, they take it. Because I think they're doing, basically, the fall of Reach with Season 2. Which, I mean, that actually seems like a good idea. I mean, personally, I think the fall of Reach should have been wrapped up in Season 1. And then Season 2, it's like, okay, we're on Halo now. It's kind of stupid that it's taken, like, three seasons to get to the Halo ring, but whatever. I understand, like, spending at least one season on events before encountering the ring, so... I don't know. We'll see. I'll check it out eventually. I'll, I'm going to check out the whole show soon. Um, thank you, Ellie. Um, Team Kiltacular for $5 says... You can do your list of topics now that I have no more money to give. <laughs> you're, t you're totally out now, are you? Zero dollars in your bank account. It's just nothing. 
Well, thank you for sending me every last dollar that you have. Team Kiltacular, I appreciate that. Um, Nitro for five pounds says, Hey, Digital Fear, thanks for the stream. It has helped distract me from heartbreak. P.S. I was an extra in that Sonic movie you talked about earlier. Really? Uh, first or second one? That's cool. Um, you know, I bet, I bet it was the end of the first one, the night exterior, where Sonic is fighting Robotnik, and there, I think there's like a crowd on the street watching. I feel like it would probably be that. I don't know. Um, but that's cool, man. Um, I'm glad you enjoy the streams, too. Thank you for your super chat. It's very nice of you. Nate F for $2 says, any tips on making characters more interesting? That's, that's a bit hard. Um, you gotta... <laughs> One of the biggest things is writing them honestly. Like, you, you, you construct them, right? You give them traits. And then when you write dialogue, dialogue for them, you gotta put yourself in their shoes and then put a bit of... a bit of the way that you would genu genuinely react to stuff in the dialogue, but then also put that spin on it where it's just like, okay, I'm f it's filtering through this character that has a distinct way of sort of looking at the world what would they say instead based on my sort of raw reaction to whatever it is like how would that sort of get filtered through this character that has attributes that are different to me um because i mean I, I write for all sorts of characters right but like every time whenever whoever i'm writing for I'm always taking my initial real reaction to some kind of scenario into consideration. And then it's just like, okay, well, this character I'm writing for isn't me. How do they differ from me? And how would they interpret this and gut feeling that I have? How would that manifest in this other person? So there is that step to it that's... Um, I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but it's a hard thing to sort of articulate. You know, good like good character writing, like writing good dialogue. Because it has to come from an honest place. Like, you, you put yourself in the situation that you're writing, and then it's just like, how would I react to this? Genuinely. And then you take that feeling, and then you sort of, you got to filter it through another person, another persona. And sometimes you got to go like completely against what your gut instinct would be because maybe you're writing like a psychopath or something, for instance, where it's just like, okay, well, this is my reaction, but this guy would be like the polar opposite of that or just like totally neutral. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard because you can't completely identify with like characters like that. Um... Yeah, it's just it's just a balancing act of like real gut reaction. Like what would you think and feel if you were in that situation? And then also like what would a character like this say sort of fact and also and factoring in what your feeling is and sort of either going with that or deliberately going against it, but either way it's sort of informing the dialogue that you're writing. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm probably doing a terrible job at explaining it, but, like, that's the best I can do. Sorry. I mean, you're asking about shit that's, like, it's sort of intuitive. Like, you just kind of get a sense of how to do this shit if you do it long enough, and it's just, like, I don't, I haven't put enough thought into, like, how I would word this to, like, convey the same methodology to other people anyway there you go hope hopefully that's you can do something with that <laughs> i don't know um thanks nate f jacob shakia for 500 yen says john what did you think of dune 2 i like the part when dune said 
It's Timothy Chalamet time, and Lisa and all gaived all over the place. <laughs> yeah. You know what my favorite part of Dune was? When Timothy Chalamet, at the very end of the movie, lies back on a dune of sand and makes a sand angel with his hands and feet, and the camera slowly pans in on his face, and he goes, I f have finally become Dune Part 2. And then it cuts to black, and the end credits roll. I have to say, that was one of the scenes ever. And definitely, the movie overall was one of the movies that was ever made by a director. You know? If you're, if you're going to press me on what I really thought about the movie, that is what I would say about it. Uh, Dune 2 is sweet, man. Um, great, uh, great visual effects. I thought the cast was really strong. Like, Timothy Chalamet is really good. I feel like he gets a lot of shit, but he's, he's good at what he does. Um... Yeah, just well-directed. The sandworm sequence was a particular highlight. Um, just a very absorbing story. And, uh... Yeah. That's my TED Talk on Dune 2. Sorry, I haven't thought about it enough. It's a cool... It was a cool movie, though. I really like it. Uh, thank you, Jacob. Uh, Nate F for five dollars says thoughts on Game of Thrones season eight. Oh boy, the people already hate me enough for liking Last of Us Part Two. Don't bring this up. I liked it. People always want a perfect story with a happy ending. Same reason why they don't like The Last of Us Two. They don't appreciate nuance. I like The Last of Us Two more than Game of Thrones season eight. I mean, Game of Thrones season eight. I I. It wasn't, it didn't stand out to me as, like, stellar. But when I saw the ending, where, like, what's his name? Bran? Whatever wheelchair kid's name is. I forget his name. But he, like, becomes king at the end, and it's just like, oh. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, that was my reaction. It wasn't just like, I can't believe they did that, or, like, or whatever. You know? It's just like... I was like, oh, all right. I guess. I mean, if you're going to make someone king, I guess you want it, you would want it to be like the seer that can sort of predict what's going to happen. I don't, I don't fucking know. And there's certainly things about it I agree with that, you know, people criticize like the, how dark the, the White Walkers attacking whatever the fuck castle, castle, whatever the fuck. I think that was the exact name. Um, it's like really hard to like see the action and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, yeah I, can see, I see your point. Um, and it did, uh, you know, you had like people sort of teleporting from one region to an all another all of a sudden when it would take an entire season from for people to get from point A to point B because they had the time to do it. But now it's just like, okay, well... You know, you have the showrunners telling HBO, well, we want to wrap everything up in this one season. We think we can do it. And HBO is like, uh, okay. And then they do it. But then in order to get everything done in the one season, they have to make it so like people sailing from one region to another just get there instantaneously whenever the screenplay demands. Like, I understand people complaining about that. Like, I get it. But there, there were parts of season eight that I can't ignore. Like, the Clegane fight. I thought that was so fucking cool. Like, it's one of those scenes... The, like, I'll just look up on YouTube... I'll just search for you on YouTube... And just watch it again and again. Because it just sticks out in my head. It's like, fuck, that was so cool, that one part. Like, I wish this was its own little movie. Was, like, the Clegane brothers fighting each other. Like, I just thought that was such a badass scene and it's just like yeah like it kind of screwed up all around that throughout the season but i'm not gonna let that make me ignore when there's like 
really cool distinct singular moments like that where it's just like fuck that was like good filmmaking you know like i'm not just gonna shut that out of my brain forever just because everyone is just like oh game of thrones season eight was terrible like i like i even in bad movies like sometimes in a terrible movie there'll be a scene where it's just like fuck that was actually really well done that one little part of it and i'll always remember that and that might even inspire me to like make an entire thing you know just off of that one awesome thing that i saw in like a season and i and i look at um seasons of television as sort of individual capsules of production you know where it's just like hey this show season one they did really well season two is great season three they slipped up but I don't let that ruin the whole show for me. It's just like, well, that was just season three of that show that was bad. You know? That doesn't mean I'm, like, soured off of watching season one and season two again. Like, the people who, who are just like, Game of Thrones is ruined now because of that eighth season. It's just like, come on, dude. There's, like, there's, there's so much good work that was done in the previous seasons. Like, can't you just look at those seasons as individual products? And it's just like, can't you just say, like, that was good, that was good, that was bad. Oh, it's good again. But because, oh, there's one bad season, that means the whole thing's bad and I don't want to watch it anymore. That, that, that is so disappointing to me to see that, to see people reacting to it that way. But whatever. I mean, ultimately, I don't care. I mean, it's just... I didn't... I didn't hate it. And I had to have it... Because sometimes I let just sh shit just wash over me and I'm, I don't think about it too much. And it's just like, oh, that was pretty cool. And then people have to point out to me, like, what you thought that was cool when this character did X and Y and th that makes no fucking sense. And then later on, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I guess that was dumb. You know, that doesn't really affect my initial reaction to it. And it doesn't make me think less of the parts that I really liked, like the Clegane fight and stuff, you know? Anyway. The Game of Thrones is ruined now, has weight to it because everything leads to the end, meaning there's nothing self-contained about it. I love the early seasons, but 8 does kind of spoil them. I know what you're- I know what you mean. But you, you're saying there's nothing self-contained about it? S the production of seasons of television are by definition self-contained because it's like okay this year we're doing season whatever let's get this cast together what's everyone's schedule looking like we can get this guy this guy this guy everyone is the, in is in x or y stage of their lives maybe they're they're on a roll maybe they're not doing so hot in their personal lives and that makes the work suffer there's all these fucking factors that are going into a single season of television you I don't think you you have to look at it to a degree as it being self-contained, right? Because that that and every season that's different. It's just like oh, maybe a cast member died, you know, or isn't doing so well, or you know, they're unhealthy, and you know that's going to affect their schedule or the the amount of scenes that they they can even do, or like you know what location are we shooting in? Did we burn the location? Do we still have it? Like, what's our budget this season? Is, is the studio giving us enough money to do what we want? Like, there's all these factors. So, like, I, f I f can't help but look at seasons of television as sort of individual self-contained things. Not the story of Game of Thrones. Like, Shameless is a show I love that sucked after season seven, but you can stop watching it at almost any season before and have a satisfying end to the story. Like I said, I, I do know what you mean, because it all, it all, all, the whole thing is sort of building up to the White Walkers thing, right? But, I mean, the, the failure of season eight was based on the showrunner's decision at that time to just end the show because they were done with it. They were tired and they wanted to move on to something else, which I am not entirely unsympathetic to. I kind of get it. But I wish, for the story's sake, they had taken a couple more seasons just to... to flesh it out in a sort of... way that is, like, 
you can see how people would get from A to B and not ask questions and like yeah I don't know I just I personally look at seasons of television individually okay so and I I think I don't think Game of Thrones season 8 is a great season of television but I think it is overall a great show the quality of all seasons considered I think it's a great show I maintain that it is and I don't agree that the whole show is garbage now just because the showrunners made a hasty decision right at the end because they were tired of producing the show, you know? It's like if I were to rewatch Game of Thrones, I would, I would be like, season one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, some hit and misses, but it's just like, yeah, awesome. And then when it's season eight, it's just like, oh yeah, this is the season where they kind of fucked things up but whatever it was still a good show up until this point anyway that was my TED talk <laughs> on Game of Thrones season 8 Do everyone thinks I'm cringe enough liking Last of Us Part 2 you just had to throw Game of Thrones season 8 on the thing as well now everyone thinks I'm double stupid Thanks, Nate F. I appreciate your super chat. It's very nice of you. Thank you. Filthy Casual for $2 says, The Fall of Reese is one half of a crappy episode. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm guessing you're referring to season two of the Halo show, which I haven't seen in, in its entirety yet. So, I mean, I don't know. It's only half of one episode? I mean, surely the whole season is spent building up to that, right? I don't know. Anyway, thank you. Uh, Marcus Wolf for $5 says, I just joined you streaming for much longer. I'm pissed that I missed so much savory, salacious, succulent John Tent. Well, I mean, the DVR is there. You can rewind or watch this later. But yeah, I'll probably be going on for another hour or so at least. Uh, thanks, Marcus. Uh, Seth Wilkin for four ninety nine says, had $5, just checked, thought I was completely out, but I guess not, lol. <laughs> Keep on keeping on, John. Well, I very much appreciate that, thank you. Hey, if you need the money, hang on to it, okay? Don't give it to my stupid, silly ass. Um, though I, I very much appreciate it. And that covers the Super Chats. Wow. Thank you for tuning in to the John Graham Super Chat Show. Uh, what do we have for um, things to talk about here that we haven't talked about already? I saw... I'll tell you something that pissed me off. So... Um, Konami is putting out these... Um, I mean, this is just an example of a much broader problem, but I've, this thing with Konami just kind of crystallized the whole issue in a way. Because they're, they're putting out these um, me Metal Gear compilations, right? It's like Volume 1 is the first one. It has like 1, 2, and 3 and some other bonus shit on it. And um, they made... I mean, people aren't happy with it because it's got a bunch of problems. The frame rate is, like, not as high as it should be. I mean, it's running on higher-end hardware. You would think that it's running at an uncapped frame right now. But apparently it's, like, locked into the original frame rate, rate which I'm guessing has something to do with the fact that the logic is probably... The, like, the game code is is locked onto the fact that it's running at a consistent frame rate of 30 or something around there. But I mean, then I just adjust the code so it's not dependent on the frame rate, you know, just so. But anyway. They put this volume one together. And then Konami is aware of a bunch of issues at launch. And then they make like a, a public post on Twitter or their website or whatever. And they're saying, here's a list of known issues at launch. Now, am I fucking crazy, or is there a glaring issue with that statement? 
we are aware of a number of issues at launch, but we're going to put it out anyway. Just know that there's a bunch of issues with it at launch. I mean, do I have to state the obvious? How about fucking fix it before you put it out, for Christ's sake? I mean, come on! <laughs> why, why does Konami feel that they can just make a public statement like that and just, like, don't need to say anything else? That's it. Yep. Bunch of issues at launch. You know, but here you go anyway. We're not even gonna bother fixing it, apparently. Like, they don't even go there. They don't even, like... You know, almost as if, like, the thought haven't, hadn't even occurred to them. It's just like, how about you fix them? And, and they're... as if they're gonna be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, we shouldn't have to tell you. If you know about the, the f issues before the game is even out, and you're the publisher slash developer, Fucking fix it, and then put it out. Like, holy shit, has it really gotten to this point? I mean, this is a- this is part of a much broader problem, right? Where people are- They're actually incentivized to put out shit in an unfinished state. Because they can just say, Oh, well, there's DLC coming later that will fix it. And that'll keep everybody employed and paid. And then we might even be eligible for a fucking award at the Games Awards show for Best Ongoing Game. Whatever the fuck that means. I assume is basically what it sounds like, is like if it's an unfinished product, it's just like, oh, here's some patches. Oh, wow, what a great out- what a great ongoing game, you guys. Well, well done for not releasing a product in a finished state. Like, the whole thing is fucking stupid. Anyway, that pissed me off. So that was a thing I had written down. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Am I fucking crazy? I mean, I do bring up a good point there, don't I? I mean, it's it's certainly an obvious point, but it's just like... It's just like a no-brainer. So like, what do we... Do you need us to tell you? To, like, fix it before you release it? You know what the issues are. It's one thing to not be aware. And then you put out the game, and then it's just like, Oh, we fucked up, sorry, here's a patch. That's different than knowing what the issues are and putting it out anyway. Oh, we'll fix it later, don't worry guys, lol. <laughs> but to me, that's so fucking dumb and unacceptable. You're right, Job, but you're still crazy, huh? Oh. Well, there you go. Um, so a couple new super chats. Nate F for two dollars says, "What TV show have you rewatched the most, and why?" Um, Breaking Bad is up there, just because every almost every scene is just so well executed, and it's just inspiring. Like, I love to throw Breaking Bad on when I'm writing stuff. Just because because I'm so familiar with the show at this point, I've seen it so many times, I'm not obligated to pay too much attention. But then I like just having it there as background noise, and then I'm writing, and then if I want to take a break from writing, I'll just sit back and watch Breaking Bad for a bit, and I'll be like, oh yeah, this scene, this, this was so well done. And then I'll be inspired, and then like I might think like, hmm, maybe I could execute the scene I'm working on now in a similar sort of way where the thing is revealed at the very end, or like at this stage in the scene, or whatever. Like, it's just every scene has such respectable execution that it's like, um, it makes me think about my own like, uh, process of writing a scene and like. Like what? It, what is it about the scene that that I'm writing is is special? And sh am I am I revealing the special thing of it too early? Maybe I should be like postponing the reveal of a certain element or something. You know, not every show. Like there's so few shows that do that for me. Where it's just every single scene is just like, oh, that's a clever way of doing that. You know, because a lot of there's a lot of shows some that I actually like where I have to admit the scenes are just relatively lazy where it's just like 
Yeah, it's just the scene is these two characters need to meet so they can talk about this thing and then fuck off. You know, and it's just like, shot, reverse shot, boom, we got it, let's move on. There's a lot of shows like that where it's just like, ugh, you know, it's so straightforward. But Bre Breaking Bad, every single scene is like, even if it's a simple scene, it's done in a clever way. Where it sort of postpones the reveal of something critical to the very end. And, it's, and it just always gets me thinking about, like, my own process. So I like putting on Breaking Bad, I've watched that a lot. Um, 24, 24 is another one of those shows. Um, The Sopranos. Um, what else? Other shows. The Wire, I still haven't watched, like, all the way through, so I haven't, I wouldn't count that one. Um, I do really like what I've seen of The Wire so far, but yeah from shows that I've seen. Uh, yeah. The ones that I mentioned, for sure. Um, I like putting old cartoons on. Like, I'll, I'll watch, like, old episodes of Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon and shit. House MD. Yeah, th that's a good one. Like, I, I've watched, I think, almost all of that show. I might have missed a few episodes here and there. But yeah, House is a good one where it's, like, formulaic, but that's okay. It's just a good thing to have on is, like, background noise. I like putting on The Simpsons or Family Guy. Something that I respect the writing t on some level, or it just makes me laugh. But I'm not too obligated to pay attention because I'm so familiar with it. And then it's just, like, it's just comforting background noise. Feels like something's going on while I'm sitting in the dark working on my projects, whatever it is, you know. I'm not, yeah, I know somebody was going to laugh at the Family Guy reference. I'm not saying Family Guy is well written, but I'm just saying there's, there's jokes here and there in Family Guy that get a laugh out of me. And I just, I just like having it on as like noise, you know, and I don't have to pay attention to, it. I'm not curious about what's happening beat for beat, especially in the case of Family Guy, because it, it treats the integrity of its plot with so little regard <laughs> that it's just like, God, you guys don't even care. Why Why would I care what the fuck's happening in this episode, whatever it is, because it's all just so stupid. But it is sometimes funny enough where it's like, oh, that was, uh, that was amusing. I like having this on because it's like, occasionally there'll be a joke where it's just like, oh, that, you know, that was pretty funny. Seinfeld, yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I think that answers that. Um, thank you, Nate F. Superior Torta 420 for 50 mech MX. What does MX stand for? MX $50. I don't think that's US dollars. So that's probably, going by the color, it's probably the equivalent of, like, five U.S. dollars. Uh, anyway, uh, what are your thoughts on Halo rebooting its story every new game since Halo 4 and not sticking to a single storyline? Is, is that what it did? Didn't Halo 4, 5, and 6 have this arc of, like, Cortana basically degrading and then going renegade? And, like, turning into a villain. I thought there was a... I, I thought there was... Like, a story link... Between 4, 5, and 6. I mean, regardless of what you think of the quality of the games... I didn't see them as self-contained. Maybe I'm just remembering them wrong. I don't know. Um... Yeah, but it was done terribly. Okay. Microtransaction... Oh, the MX... <laughs> Right. Um, they're all wrapped up in this saga, but they're all basically standalone and disjointed. Yeah, well, I mean, it seems like definitely after the original trilogy, they they lost a clear vision of where to go. And then 
after that with every game it's just like uh what do we do for this one uh okay let's do like this this and now halo 5 it's like oh okay let's do that now like I mean, you could argue a similar process was involved in the original trilogy in a way, because it's just with Halo 2, it's like, what do we do now? Okay, well, let's explore the Covenant side of things. But it was more, it felt like it was more organic and well thought out across the original three games. I did like the court, the idea of Cortana turning into the villain and like degrading and then becoming a sort of rogue AI. I thought that it was actually interesting. Cuz not not only do I find the idea of an AI villain interesting, but also like Chief has the the first 3 games set up this emotional connection between Chief and Cortana and all of a sudden that's turned on its head where he now has to grapple with the fact that his grounding sort of element that almost made him human is now the thing trying to kill everybody i thought that was cool but you know it could have been executed better the the, the halo 4 5 and 6 i mean at that point in the franchise it certainly a lot of the magic was lost for me but i wonder how much of that is due to the execution and not just me getting older and entering a new phase in my life where, like, I didn't have as much time for video games anymore. Like, that kind of shit. I, I mean, I, I, I do think it was a bit of both. Yeah, I think they definitely could have been executed better, but, I mean, I'm kind of foggy on what exactly they could have done better. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um... Thank you, Superior Torta420. I appreciate that. Jiggle Slinky for $10 says, Thoughts on Rooster Teeth shutting down? Oh, boy. Well. I mean, obviously, I don't think I need to say it. They were... Rooster Teeth was an inspiration to me. You know? I saw what they were doing with Halo 1. And I was like, I can do that. And then I made my own machinimas because I was inspired by them, you know. But then they sort of, um, I think they got caught up with the whole, like, you know, political correct virtue signaling thing. Like, they went down that road and it came at the expense of them being just, like, a bunch of edgy guys in their bedroom making stupid videos like they sort of went corporate from there like whereas i am still just the edge lord in his bedroom making stupid videos you know what i mean like i think w when you start making these like corporate mergers it's just all of a sudden you gotta like you start worrying so much about like your your image and marketability and stuff. And then, um, yeah, I think they just got lost in the weeds with that shit. And then they sort of lost touch with what it is that people liked about them at the, in the beginning. And, um, and then all of a sudden they, they suffered financially for it, you know, cause they were making content that people, I guess, weren't, interested in and you know they they made some interesting decisions with their content like they when they brought on monty oem i thought that was cool to do like fight scenes it's not the direction i would have gone personally to sort of you know re revitalize interest in the series but i do respect it because i mean that guy was very talented and um i thought the work that he did was good um I don't know, maybe part of it was just the gut, the core team just sort of getting older and having families and shit and just thinking less and less about the show. I don't know what exactly led to their downfall. If, I mean, if, I had, if you had to ask me to boil it down to one thing, I have no idea what it is. It's, but I remember reading about them getting shut down and it was a shame to hear that just because like, fuck, like you, you guys inspired me to do what I do and now you're gone. 
Um, yeah, I got I got no pleasure out of that. It was just like, uh, it's disappointing, you know. Because I mean, I I still f look back fondly on working with those guys in Texas because we made a couple of shorts together, and they were like super nice to me, man. I mean, they they were showing me around Texas. We went to the Alamo Draft House. They they took me there. We had like we watched a movie and drank beers, and uh, they showed me a good time. You know, we worked hard, and then at the end of the day, we would go off and do. They would show me around Texas, and we'd go go eat and do some cool shit, and and then working with them on set was really nice because they're they're really talented improv guys and i'm i'm not an improv guy but i did my best you know um so as that was sort of like i had to adapt to that on the fly where it's just like oh this is how we're doing this all right because i i usually like when i'm writing scripts i write down exactly what i'm planning to say but those they they don't work the same way like they'll they'll come up with an idea like just a really simple high concept idea it might not even sound good on paper, but then they'll just like do it. And then in the process of actually getting it all recorded, they'll throw shit in. And then it's like, oh, this is actually funny. Like that was a learning process for me. Like, and it's, it's cool working with someone else's routine like that, you know, like adapting to a new way of thinking and producing like, it was just it was just interesting it shook things up from what my basic f formula of just writing everything down to like exactly how it's going to be said planning everything out ahead of time and you know it was, it was fun improving with them um yeah i mean ev everybody i interacted with was nice um but then, you know, I heard about like the years went on and then all of a sudden these reviews were coming out from ex-employees saying the crunch was terrible and they weren't being treated right. And, you know, management just wasn't good. And um, people had issues and they would be, they felt like they were being dismissed and it's just, it's just hard to imagine because I I'm familiar with like the core rooster teeth team. I know what they're like. And so I don't know, maybe there's a misunderstanding or they just lost their way, I guess. I just, I mean, pe ex employees have plenty bad to say, but like, I mean, my experience with them was really positive. So, I mean, I think I said it already. It's, it was a shame. I was sad to hear about it. Anyway, that's my thoughts. That's my <laughs> that's my TED talk on Rooster Teeth. I wish them the best. Whatever they're doing now, whether it's the core team or any of the employees, I hope they. I wish them well, and I hope they find something that they can move on to. Um, thank you, Jiggle Slinky. I appreciate that. Adam Croucher for one pound ninety nine says, "Hey, job." When is see me after class coming back? Ha 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 ha. It's never coming back, okay? Just because you said that, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to bury that show forever. It's done. It's dead. It's gone. You're stuck with this. The John Graham show forever. Adam Croucher for another £1.99 says, Oh, and congrats on reaching 100 subs. Thank you. What a milestone. I, I agree. When the when I heard that I earned a hundred subscribers, I was like, "Wow, has anybody else in the universe pulled this off?" I don't think so. I think I'm the only the only one. It's a hundred subscribers. And that's a big number. That's a hundred. It's a hundred souls on this planet that think I'm my content is the shit. Thank you, Adam Croucher. I appreciate it. Snooper Smokio for five dollars says I am infertile from eating scented candles. The <laughs> oh my god, 
some of you guys, I mean, do you even think about what you're going to type? <laughs> you just make the decision, like, I'm going to send a super chat. I don't know what the text is, but it's going to be something. And then you just fart out some stream of consciousness shit that doesn't even make sense. And it's just like, oh, well, there you go. That's my super chat. <laughs> like, why, why, why wouldn't you proofread it? You know? It's like, okay, I typed this out. I better check this before I click send. But it's just, oh, whatever. Whatever stream, whatever my brain farts out. It's just, okay, I guess that's the text. I'll click send now. Don't want to lay in too hard on you. I'm just, just think it's funny. I appreciate the super chat, though. It's, it's very nice. Thank you, Snooper Smokio. Uh, fan Fanimations for $2 says, Here's something, lols. Well, at least that was a more... At least that was a sentence. Even if it was brief. Um, laughing in the face of infer an infertile man struggling to cope with infertility well i'm assuming that's a joke based on him eating scented candles i don't think i'm meant to take that seriously but if it was serious i don't mean to laugh at somebody's genuine misfortune so i'm sorry if i offended you uh anyway that's that covers the super chats um thank you for all of those uh, what other stupid shit do I have on my list here? I'm excited for Luigi's Mansion 2. They're gonna- they're- That was only for, um... 3DS at first, Dark Moon. But now, they're making, I think, a very smart decision in remastering it for the Switch, so I'm very excited to play that. Because I don't think I finished it on 3DS. Um, I'm a big fan of Luigi's Mansion. I think it's one of the best horror games I've ever played. I think 1 and 3 are terrific. And it would be very cool to play through the second one. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm waiting on for from Nintendo. Um, thoughts on the... Unemployed Sonic Machinima? Oh, you mean Sonic for Hire? I mean, that's that's not a Machinima technically, but I know what you mean. It was it was a show f that aired on the Machinima network. Um, yeah, Sonic for Hire was good. I liked that. I didn't watch all of it, but uh, it's a it's a fun premise. I like the idea of taking that character and sort of acknowledging his troubled transition into 3d and then he's just sort of the idea of him sort of being a washed up like he doesn't really know what to do with himself it's cool making a show out of that is interesting job do you watch any machinima content on youtube and if you do have you seen crash by 800 m rang or oh boomerang so i thought that was an eight um boomerang i don't think i have no i don't watch a lot of machinima stuff i mean i know that sounds like maybe arrogant or hypocritical however you want to look at it but like i'm just so just focused on my own machinima projects i don't really spend time ingesting other stuff if i watch other stuff it's usually like you know, like, news on YouTube, or, like, live action or cartoons that I'm familiar with, or, like, just full-on, like, live action productions, you know, whether it's TV or movies that I haven't seen. I don't really watch other people's machinima projects. I think a lot of the time when I see machinima stuff and characters' mouths... You can see their faces, but their mouths aren't moving as they're talking. That really, like, just kind of sucks me out of it. And I don't mean to, like, you know... I don't mean to put down people who, like, make 
content like that. It's just personally, when I see that, I'm just like, ugh. Like that's one of the cool things about working with Halo is because everyone has helmets, right? So you can sort of get past that thing of like, okay, well, they're just talking underneath their helmets, you know? So this kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, but when I'm just looking at blank faces, but then I'm meant to, I hear a voice over top and it's just like, this is this person talking. I'm just like, mm, yeah, okay. Like... I just can't I have trouble sort of getting invested. Aren't there helmetless elites in the Hard Justice reboot? Well, that that is true. But I mean it's that's not every elite. And uh I think at least in, in the cases of those, it's like you can only see half their face. Well, in some cases you can see their eyes. I don't fucking know. I feel like with the elites, it's a bit more acceptable because they don't, you don't see them as often. And there's enough armor on their head that... Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking know. I mean, I can't fix the game so you can, like, move their mouth. I mean, I gotta... I'm go if I'm gonna do Machinima, I gotta pick something, right? So, I mean, I'd, I'd rather go with the game that not only is easy to use, but for the most part, they, they all have their faces covered, you know, in the case of the Spartans. And s some of, I think, or most of the elites. Maybe just some of the elites. They have... They have helmets on, you know? So... I mean, there's exceptions. I mean, if it's funny enough, I don't care. I mean, if it's just like some dumb Gmod thing where it's meant to be wild and crazy and it doesn't really matter if people's mouths are moving, then it's just like, whatever. If it's funny enough, that's cool. So I really like some of the Gmod stuff I've seen that just tries to be like super funny. Uh, anyway. Uh, Marcus Wolf for $2. Pee, poo, pee, poo, 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 pee. Um, I agree. Great message. Powerful. A powerful message to put out there. Um, I'm inclined to agree. Clearly, you put a lot of thought into that, so, um, thank you, Marcus. Team Kiltacular for 199 says, Thank my mom for this super chat. She is starving. <laughs> so did you send it? And she's just like, what the fuck? That was my food money. <laughs> or is she willingly sending this and she's saying, give this to John, please, so he can keep spending money on frivolous things. And making his stupid machinima content. Thanks, Team Kiltacular. Thor Studios BR7 for $2 says, For this $2, you must finish Mega Man Goes to Willamette. Did I not finish that c series? I mean, what does finished even mean? That I used cutscenes right up until the end of the game? Didn't... I can't remember if, where I stopped. I guess it would have been around... Maybe the middle of the game or near the beginning. I don't know. I think at that point it was just like, okay, I did the joke. Like, I don't think I could come up with anything else. I don't know. I think I just lost interest overall, even if there was more material there. But I'm glad you liked it. Thank you, Thor Studios BR7. Burger King for $10 says, AI is taking my job. It's over for me. Ai Chief Tasukete. Is that... I don't know what that is, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, AI is certainly going to pick off a few jobs. You know. Programmers and shit. But, like, they're still... 
there's still room for human ingenuity and creativity. AI looks smart sometimes, but really it's it's not that smart. Because it does hinge on pre-existing material a lot of the time. If not all of the time. So. Still need... Even algorithms still need people to make shit. So they can make their weird conglomerate images or articles or whatever the fuck. Uh, thank you, Burger King. Snooper Smokio for $5 says, John, you are handsome. What would you rate your Riz level on a scale of 1 to 13? Thoughts in, on Skibidi Toilet? <laughs> um, I think I actually know what Riz is. It's, um... I can't... Ah, oh, fuck. The R stands for something. I can't remember. Because... Riz is partly charisma. I just, I can't remember what the R is. Is it like romantic charisma? I think that's what it is. It's the, it's the idea of romance and charisma combined into a fucking stupid term, Riz. So if you have Riz, you have romantic charisma. Um, I don't know, maybe. I haven't really spent time utilizing it if I have any. Because I've just been working. I don't know what my fucking rating is. Skibidi Toilet? I'm aware of that too. And I've seen some... I've seen some episodes of it. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's like batshit crazy, but like, I mean, that's the point. And, uh... It's quite interesting. And it's cool that that guy is just blown up just doing his little videos and... They're just so unhinged. I think that's what people like about him. It's cool. W Job, why do you say skibidi like that? Because that's how it's fucking spelled. Well, how am I supposed to say it? Skibidi toilet. Sk skibidi? What am I meant to put emphasis on? I don't get it. Skibidi toilet or skibidi toilet? I say words weird sometimes. Okay? Because not only am I Canadian, if I was a Canadian native, I would say we shit weird anyway. But then you have to also layer on to that the fact that I'm from Glasgow, Scotland, right? So, like, I'm aware of... There's, people have a certain way of saying things over there, and then people have a certain way of saying things in Canada as well, so I'm sort of a weird mix. Skibetti? Skibetti? Is that how I'm supposed to say it? Skibbity. Skibbity toilet. Haha, ha, John doesn't understand Zoomer speak. I actually do. I looked, I one day I looked all that shit up. I looked like at a Zoomer dictionary. <laughs> I was just like, okay, what does all this fucking stupid shit mean? So I, I looked it up one day. So I'm, I think I know most of the terms. No cap, for real, for real. Um, all right, that covers the super chats. Um, hey, John, do you... Hey, John, do you that Marty O'Donnell, do you know... I assume that Marty O'Donnell, the composer for Halo, is running for politics. I'm not joking. Yeah, I did hear about that. I had it written down. I just wasn't sure if it was interesting enough to mention, but... Uh, I mean, I do think it's interesting. See, he's running for Congress in wherever he is. I don't know, some U.S. state, I'm guessing. And, uh, I mean, if he thinks he can do a good job, then, yeah, go for it, you know? Like... I mean, if he, if he has a policy and a platform and he's, you know, he's got like, if I get elected, this is what I'm going to do and people are on board with that, then, you know, do it. Why not? Wherever you think your, your time is best spent, 
if that's politics for him now, then sure. I mean, politics needs more good people for sure. So. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know anything about his platform or where even he is and what region he would be governing over. But, you know, if he thinks he can make a positive difference, he should try. Um, lol, I had no idea Marty was so political. Well, I don't know if it's him being so political, but I imagine it's just... He sees how things in his region, wherever he is, is being run, and he's frustrated, and he knows how to fix it. I can see that being enough to run for a political position. If he can get the funding and the support, like just the hard part is just i think you know if you're a nobody and you, you you're not like a career politician and it, it can be hard to like get support and stand out you know and make it to a point where you can actually contend with these people in a live debate or whatever whatever you call that the upper echelons where it's like you're all on tv together on a debate in a fucking dog shit format where everybody has to distill their ideas to like five second sound bites um yeah I'm disappointed that he's running with the cringe party what's the cringe party I don't even know what side of politics he's on I don't even know if he's a liberal or conservative or whatever some screenshots from his discord came out he's got no idea what he's doing <laughs> Oh, well. I don't know, dude. I don't have much to say on it. I just think, you know, if he thinks he can make a positive difference, he should try doing whatever. Uh, Snooper Smokio for $5 says, I robbed an old lady and lit her on fire. So I am using her money for this. Don't worry. Don't worry that you set an old lady on fire. Okay, dude. Do you watch Braveheart and yearn for the hills? Scotland forever. <laughs> yearn for the hills? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Scottish, so that means I just want to live on the highlands with just a bunch of fucking sheep. <laughs> No infrastructure, no technology. Ah, uh, what I would give to just live on the the misty hills of Scotland. <laughs> just sit on it. Just find a hill and sit on it. That's all I would do. You are a true Scotsman. <laughs> Ah, okay, I just love. I just love sitting on this hill, <laughs> doing Scottish things. <laughs> um, well, I I would find a power outlet somewhere. I'd f find a. I would. Uh, there would be just enough in infrastructure to have a power outlet where I can plug in a TV and a DVD player, and then I can watch Braveheart on repeat while just sitting on a, a hill in Scotland somewhere, on the misty hills of Scotland. And I have the face paint on and everything. I love Braveheart, it's a good fucking movie. <laughs> um, John, who is cooler, Master Chief or Arthur Morgan? I don't know, who cares? <laughs> Who fucking cares, okay? <laughs> uh sorry, I'm I'm tired now, so I'm gonna sound like an asshole responding to some of these. Er Erica Ehrenreich for two Australian dollars. Oh yeah. Australia. Also can't wait for hard justice. It looks awesome. Well, thank you. I'm glad you think so. I'm working on it. 
I'm working on it. I'm almost done shooting the first episode, and then I'll get the whole thing cast and the voices done, and then and then I'll put it out. I think I'll be able to put it out sometime next month. Um, what else do I have on my list here? Hmm. Oh, I saw they, um, they remastered all the Tomb Raider games, which I thought was pretty cool. Apparently it's a pretty faithful remaster as well. And it does that thing where you can freely switch between, like, old school and remastered graphics. And, um, what, what, what quite surprised me about that is that that applies not only to the games, but also the cutscenes. Like, you can press the same button, and it'll switch between, like, the cutscenes are done in the same way, but then one is, like, upscaled, and then the other, the original has, like, the pixelation. I was just impressed that they did that with the cutscenes as well as, like, the the gameplay parts. Um, so I thought that was cool. The only thing that was weird about it was that it came with this, um, like, Halo 2. But yeah, well, yeah, like, Halo 2 and the Halo 1, but... Uh, in Halo 2, the cutscenes were, like, a bit different. In Halo 2, they were completely remastered, like, redone by Blur Studios, weren't they? It wasn't just that the, the cutscenes were upscaled, you know? They were completely done from scratch. Um, but so I just, I just thought it was cool in the case of Tomb Raider that you could switch between upscaled and original pixelation of the original cutscenes, which is cool. The only thing that was, like, cringe about the Tomb Raider remasters was that it came with these, it came with a disclaimer, and it was saying, like, the, it was like a trigger warning, basically, of, like, outdated cultural prediction, or cultural depictions. And it even, I think the exact word that it used to describe it was inexcusable in the, in the, the trigger warning. And it's just like, what do you mean inexcusable? You know, you know, these games have a beloved audience, like, or like a dedicated audience that thinks they're the shit. And you are making you're remastering this game because you know the degree to which it's loved are you really gonna at the same time go out of your way to say that it's inexcusable that the original games existed the way they did like i mean I, it feels like it's one or the other you know i mean if you're gonna condemn it fine go ahead i guess but like you're gonna do that out of one side of your mouth but then at the same time it's like Oh, these games, they're so inexcusable. Anyway, here they are again, totally remastered. <laughs> it's like, what? If, make up your mind, dude, you know what I mean? So, I thought that was interesting and cringe. Um, I'm looking forward to the Silent Hill 2 remake. Which, um... I think people are like, they don't know what to make of it because it's Bloober team doing it. And, uh, I mean, Bloober has some problems, but I mean, I don't, I don't think they're terrible. I mean, I, I played, um, Bloober made, um, the Blair Witch game, which I actually quite enjoyed, even though, like, there were some broken systems in it. Like, sometimes you can't get key shit to spawn properly or the dog is fucking annoying and doesn't lead you to the right place to advance the game and so it just involved like reloading some checkpoints but like other than that I thought it was actually a pretty well done like first person horror game where the horror was the horror was actually sufficiently subtle and well executed that I was just like oh wow this is actually pretty creepy you know and so I think like the way I feel like Bloober has a grasp on how to do horror in video games enough so 
that with some sufficient help from Konami or whatever, they could probably do a pretty good job on the Silent Hill 2 remake. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, there, There is an interesting thing there with like the... I think part the the stiffness of the character models in the cutscenes of the original PlayStation 2 game sort of lent to it an emotional ambivalence in regard to what the characters were feeling. It sort of added to the weird dreamlike quality of it. There's something to that. Cause now, like with this remaster you have like every sort of micro expression being rendered in like very high detail on the person's face where it's just like, okay, well I know exactly what they're thinking now, you know, and people are making jokes and memes about it. Like, you know, that it's like the, the character, the main character in silent Hill too. I can't remember his name. Green jacket guy. He's just like, if he's sad, you know he's sad because, like, he looks sad. He's just like, oh, like, he's, you can see he's in such despair. But if you play the original game on PlayStation 2, his face, his stiffness is, there's a stiffness to his face where you can't really tell what he's thinking or feeling. That might, I mean, that's obviously due to technical limitation, but I also think there is, there's, there's something in regard to storytelling that that actually helps out with you know what i mean because you're you're meant you're meant to like he's sort of meant to be emotionally muted i don't know if i'm explaining it very well but like i just I, the stiffness of the old game in regard to like rendering people's faces was obviously due to technical limitation but i think there's more to it than that and i think i think the remake risks losing that by being so on the nose with everything um but i i don't know i mean like everything else i mean we'll see how it turns out i mean i've had high hopes for stuff and then it just comes out a train wreck i mean fuck i bought that um star wars battlefield collection like, they remastered the old games, right? And it was supposed to be, like, new multiplayer servers, and, you know, the whole thing is just un got enough polish to make it all seamless where people can, like, there's cross-play. Well, I guess there was supposed to be. Did I say Battlefield? I meant Battlefront. Battlefront Classic Collection. Bruh, why would you buy that lumfow? Are you laughing your fucking ass off? Are you literally doing that right now? Dude, not only was I aware of the franchise because it had renowned... Well, not... I'm, I don't mean f franchises in all of Star Wars, but I mean Battlefront specifically. It had renowned multiplayer. You know? And then they were also offering a discount if you pre-order it. It was like 10% off. It wasn't that much, but it was, you know, at least it's something. And it's just like, I mean, I got burned in the past pre-ordering shit, and then it turns out to be shit. So, like, a while ago, I made the decision, like, I'm done pre-ordering shit. I'm just going to wait for shit to come out, and then I'm going to look at the reviews, and then maybe I'll get it. But with this, I knew the multiplayer was held in really high regard, that they were just remastering the old games, and that they were offering a discount if you pre-order. So it's just like, oh, whatever. I mean, Steam has a pretty good refund policy, so I was just like, fuck it. I'll get it. And then it came out, and it was one of the fucking worst launches in recent memory. And it's just like, fucking hell. I knew this was... I knew this was a mistake. I knew in the back of my mind, like, they're probably gonna fuck this up, and then they did. But, you know, I mean, refunding it on Steam was painless, because they have a pretty good uh, system. Like, if you're not... If you... I think it's like... If you have less than two hours of playtime on a game, and you've owned it for less than two weeks, then whatever your problem with it is, you can just say, "Yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy with it," and you'll get your money back. So, and I did. So, I mean, it's no big deal, you know. But it just, it just pissed me off. It's just like, how can you fuck this up? 
You already had the game there. All you had to do is make it work. You know what I mean? And they couldn't even do that. Like... Yeah. So that was another thing. And then, uh... Fuck, what else? Oh, yeah. We lost Akira Toriyama, you guys. That that was uh, very sad to hear. Because, I mean, I was a... I was a huge DBZ fan. I got me into anime. I'm not really an anime guy. I know a lot of my fans are into anime. Actually, it seems that way with a lot of communities. Where, like, if you just mention anime once, everyone, almost everyone who's listening has something to say about it, or it's just like make making recommendations. So anime? A anime? Did you see anime? Oh my god, have you seen this anime? Have you seen that anime? 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 Have you seen- This anime is so good. Oh my god, you gotta see this anime. Like, people fucking are ape shit about anime nowadays. And it's just, I, like, I'm not an anime guy. Like, I've- I mean, I, I've browsed the front page of Crunchyroll, and I'm just like, fuck, I don't- I haven't seen any of this shit. <laughs> but I watched- I've watched, like, a few seminal, m like, movies, like Ghost in the Shell, uh, Akira. DBZ definitely was one of the first things that, like, got me into the whole medium of anime. And, uh, it's just cool as fuck. Like, it's, it's basically, like, animated pro wrestling. <laughs> But it's a cool story about, like, aliens and just, I mean, it's a lot of, like, oh, his power level's this. Oh, but this, this guy's power level's that. Let's stare at each other for three episodes before someone throws a punch. <laughs> and then, you know, they take their shirts off and they're all ripped and shit. And then it's just like. Let's fight and get all bruised up for a few episodes and then there's and then it's over and then there's a new story arc and I mean there's more to it than that, but there's a lot of that sort of thing. But that's okay, because it was it was cool. It's a little inconsistent too, which I mean it's it's hard to keep a show like that consistent, you know, in regard to like everybody's ability and power levels. Because, I mean, like, they... I mean, in the in the very starting episodes... You remember when Nappa and Vegeta show up? In that city? Like, they first land on Earth. And Nappa... He's... Vegeta says something, like, give him a little taste or something. And Nappa does a thing. And basically just blows up an entire fucking city. Like, just leaves this massive crater... Where I guess just thousands or tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people have just been obliterated. And it's just like, where do you go from there? You know, that's just the beginning of the show. You know, a guy can just like lift two, he just lifts two fingers up like this. And he's like, ah, and then just like an entire city is gone. And then from there, it's just like. What does it even mean when Frieza then, you know, multiple story arcs later have like a power level of a million? That's not the beginning, Lamau. I'm I mean the f initial episodes overall. Cause Vegeta and Nappa showing up is it's not it's not super early. I mean, I know it starts with Raditz. And then there's like multiple episodes of like Oh, Vegeta and Nappa are on their way. You know, eventually they're going to get there. But you'd think, like, as on their first introduction, you'd have Nappa do something smaller than that. Blowing up an entire city. You know? So then it's just like, okay, well, if Nappa can do that already, without even fucking being in a frenzy or angry or whatever, right? It's just like, well... 
if say a, a character like Frieza way down the line is super angry, that means that they can fucking just blow up the universe <laughs> with a move, you know? It's just like, it's, I feel like it's hard to say consistent when you're writing a show like that where everybody has the, this ridiculous amount of fucking power. Um, I'm talking about Dragon Ball Z, okay? I'm not, I'm not including Dragon Ball in this. I'm, maybe I'm confusing some people because they think I'm talking about Dragon Ball as well. Dragon Ball Z starts with Raditz. That's not 153 episodes into Dragon Ball Z. I, di I didn't watch Dragon Ball. I felt like it's one story though. Okay, fine. But I'm talking about Dragon Ball Z, which is a distinct set of episodes. I think you can agree. I didn't watch Dragon Ball. I mean, if Dragon Ball Z felt like enough, you know? It was, just, it was enough just keeping up with that show every day. I learned about Dragon Ball. It's just like, oh, God, that's, there's, this is sort of, there's pretext to this entire thing. Like, ugh, whatever. I'm just going to watch Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball is more grounded and is honestly better. Maybe it is, yeah. Maybe, I mean, I just, I got nothing against it. I just never got around to watching it. That's all. Dragon Ball Z was just, when I was growing up, that was the thing that was on TV. Dragon Ball wasn't on YTV, I don't think. It may have been on, like, Cartoon Network or some shit. Like, it may have been on TV somewhere. But, uh... It wasn't on YTV, which was, like, my go-to. It was just Dragon Ball Z. And that started with Raditz coming to Earth. And then Vegeta and Nappa show up not too long after that. Toonami, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, I never wa really watched Toonami. I watched some of it, but yeah, I just, I just didn't get around to it, that's all. Um, but anyway, like, I used to race home to watch Dragon Ball Z, like, after, when school was done. Because I was stoked about where the story was going. Even though it was just a lot of, like, sh buff dudes just beating the shit out of each other. Like, I was genuinely compelled. Especially around the Namek arc. Where, like, I have to see what happens between Goku and Frieza. It took way too long. But when it finally did reach the end of its arc, it felt, like, fucking epic. Where it's just like, oh my god, like, this felt like an event, you know? For me. At that age. It was just like... So cool. And then later on, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to Chrono Trigger. Of which Akira Toriyama did the artwork. And uh, I think it was the creator of Final Fantasy. And then the guy who did the Final Fantasy music. And then... And, and Akira Toriyama. There was like this core group of these three guys. Who were just like masters of their craft. And then they got together and made Chrono Trigger. And Chrono Trigger is sick. Like, that, that is one of the best RPGs I've ever played. I haven't played a lot of RPGs. I've played a... F I played a fair amount, I think, of RPGs. And Chrono Trigger is definitely one of the best I've played. Um... It took me a while to come around to RPGs, too, because for a long time, like, I was just, like, Sega, N64, you know? I had friends with Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1, and that that's where, like, a lot of the RPGs... A lot of the RPGs were on those, and I didn't have them. So I, I, had, I was playing, like, Sonic and Mario and shit. And then, like, later and much later in life, I came around to RPGs and started playing them. And I'm like, holy shit, this is actually pretty sweet. Like, I'm sorry I missed out on this so early, you know? Um, did you at least have a Game Boy and play at least FF6? No, I didn't play any RPGs on handheld. Not until at least Game Boy Advance, anyway. No, I had a Game Boy Color. That was my... I didn't even have a... Even the DMG Game Boy, like the first Game Boy, that was before my time. Um, my first Game Boy was the Color. 
and I had Pokemon Red with it, and that was sick. I don't know if you call that an RPG. I mean, I guess. I mean, RPG is such a funny term. Because, I mean, role-playing game can technically apply to so many things, but when people say RPG, they're actually referring to, like, a much more specific subset of games. You know? Um... But anyway, I was really sad to hear about Akira Toriyama. I think the guy's a great artist and storyteller, and he made really compelling stuff that really entertained me as a kid. And uh, I'm very grateful for the work that he's done. And uh, rest in peace. Um, what else we got here? Um... Did you guys see the IGN video about Resident Evil 5 being racist? <laughs> Everything comes full circle eventually. Fucking hell, man. So, I mean, I, obviously I bring that up because I... I made fun of that shit in RB and the Chief like 15 fucking years ago. And now... You know... This article comes out as if that way of thinking is, like, new or should be taken seriously. And it's just like, <laughs> oh my god, really? <laughs> and it, it, they, they definitely thought that was their opinion, is that it was racist. I mean, it's not in the headline, but if you actually look at the video or read the article, they nail it down to, like... It's racism. That's the reason why this game can't be remade. And it's like, is it? Because, I mean, the... I mean, setting aside the obvious context of that, you know... Chris is just this guy, he's a part of this agency. The... Story takes place in Africa, Africa, because why not? I mean, it's a, sort of a new region. It's interesting to do something with that, especially in a horror context. Because I remember, like, when before Resident Evil Five came out, there was a lot of hype around it that it was going to have this really advanced lighting system, where, like, you like one second you would be blinded by the sheer amount of sunlight, and then you would go into like a pitch black tunnel. And your eyes would have to adjust and then everything would be like super dark. And then you go back out into the sunlight and it's like blinding again. So even though the sunlight is there, it seemed to be playing with this idea of being constantly blinded by the sheer flux of light being provided to you. You know what I mean? Like you're either, it's either pitch black because you've just been in the sun or you're in the sun and it's just so bright that you can't see anything. The It felt like the game was doing something really innovative with that, where it's just like, hmm, you're doing a horror game out in the open in broad daylight, where you're sort of using the sharpness from going dark to light and dark again as sort of uh, the sort of new darkness, you know, instead of just being in a pitch black mansion this idea of limiting visibility based on like high dynamic range was really cool, but it didn't really end up do. It felt like it sort of threw that out just to make everything streamlined and easy to play. And then it just, in terms of its lighting, it was just ended up being kind of flat, you know, like I wish they would have done more with that. Um, the HDR shit that I think they were initially planning, but I think they eventually just discarded. They were just like, ah, whatever, let's just make it a straightforward shooting game. But it actually, I mean, Resident Evil 5 is dumb. I mean, it's like pants on head stupid, especially at the end, but it's actually pretty enjoyable. I think there's parts of the first act of that game that are actually quite freaky. Like, um, I just, I like the sort of favela at the beginning. That idea of, I mean, Resident Evil 4 did it already, but like, I, th I think the idea of just 
being in a foreign pa place and being surrounded and like every everybody's turning turning against you there is something kind of scary about that we saw that in resident evil 4 and resident evil 5 just did it again in a new place but it was still well done i thought and then the co-op you can definitely argue that the co-op sucked a lot of the horror out of it because you know when you're going through all these scary places and situations with a friend right next to you and joking over voice chat and making stupid jokes then you know it's easy to see why that wouldn't be that scary but it was fun it's fun to play through that game with a friend um which i always liked that about it um but then you know this fucking idea that it was racist cropped up way back then when it came out and it was dumb then didn't get much traction back then because it was dumb and it's still dumb and that's why that IGN article fell on its face you know that idea just failed again it's like why did you even bother digging this back up like this is fucking stupid um people were over this you know this discussion's been had but no, it's you, this IGN author, is, have like re come to this profound realization. Oh, you know what? It actually was racist the whole time. Like, no, dude. Actually, the context makes it pretty clear. He's just on a mission in Africa. We're in Africa now because why not? We're, you know, we're setting the game in a new place. This will be interesting. But then people just can't get over the surface racial element of it. It's just like white guy versus a bunch of black people. And then therefore it's racist. And it's just such a shallow reading of the situation. Um, and then not only that, you had Sheva, who's your partner throughout the whole thing. You know? So as if it wasn't clear already that it's not racist... And then all it also starts the whole game off with a cutscene. Not even Resident Evil 4 didn't even do this. Resident Evil 5 starts off with a cutscene of just like an innocent like African guy who's like he like you can see he's just like a guy regular dude being taken advantage of and I think it's Jill Valentine in the the plague mask and cloak she in I mean, she's under, like, control by Wesker or whatever the fuck, but she infects him with the thing. And so you understand right off the bat, like, these are innocent people that are being taken advantage of, and they are being given this thing that turns them into a monster that treat everything as hostile, including you. And you've got to respond to that out of self-defense. But then that still doesn't stop these people like that IGN guy who's just like digs all this stuff back up it's just like you know what it's racist like actually no dude um and I'm not I don't even think Resident Evil 5 is necessarily the game that they should remake like I would rather I think I would honestly like another remake of the first one like the first I know there was the original first one on PlayStation, and then it was remade for GameCube. I would actually... I don't think I would mind a, another remake of just pouring all the processing power into, like, a little mansion crawler where, you know, you could have it... You, you could... you could, Maybe you could use all that processing, modern-day processing power to have a really innovative and thorough, like, dismemberment or gore system. You know, if you poured it all into that, maybe that could be, like, really cool. Um, but, I mean, either that or Code Veronica. I would like a... I think a Code Veronica remake would be cool. I think I've played that whole game from start to finish, but I'm not sure. I can't really remember the end of it. Maybe I didn't finish it. But I remember enjoying Code Veronica. I mean, the story was a little weird. But I mean, maybe that's... an op You know, one of... Maybe that's a reason to go back and remake it. You know, you can sort of make the story a bit less weird. 
and maybe maybe fans don't want that. Maybe they want the weirdness. I, I don't know what the best approach is. I would I would uh, happily take a remake of Resident Evil Five if it was well done. But I it just feels like Resident Evil Five feels a little too recent to make a remake of. But then again, they they did this with Dead Space, so why not? Because like Re Resident Evil Five was the generation after Resident Evil Four that was on like it was next gen relative to Resident Evil Four, but I mean Dead Space the original Dead Space was PlayStation Three and they remade that and that was stellar so maybe they can do the same sort of thing for Resident Evil Five like if they can keep the f the funness and the co op but like just make it actually more scary and less ridiculous. That would actually be pretty cool, I think. I don't know. Are you guys liking this stream? I don't, I feel like I'm boring everybody. I just, I don't, I like, I'm just, I wrote down things that are kind of interesting to me and I'm just sort of picking them off one at a time here. I mean, I don't know, maybe this stream has gone on too long. I should just call it a night. Yeah, bro, this is good. Okay, good. You always think you're boring. I know. I know, I got that. I am insecure. That's, that's, uh, that's for sure. So, but yeah, it's just like, if I start talking for too long and then the chat just seems a little disengaged and I'm just like, do, are people actually listening still or <laughs> have I just uh, gone on a little too long and maybe I should just cut it short or not cut it short but because we've been going on for plenty of time I think but you know I'm just quite happy talking about shit that kind of interests me um I've enjoyed listening to the rants while I clean my house that's cool got another four hours in me well, that's good. 118 people leaving right now. <laughs> okay. Well, that was my TED Talk on Resident Evil 5, so... What else do we have here? Um... Did I talk about Dune 2? I think I did. Dune 2 is sweet. Can't remember the last thing I saw in theaters before that. I think it was Talk To Me that, um, it's like a horror movie where people grab, like, the statue of a hand and then they see, like, a corpse sort of manifest in front of them or some spirit from the other world and that was pretty sweet. I really enjoyed that. That was, like, the last good movie I saw in theaters before Dune, I think. Um, I recommend that. Um, Beetlejuice 2. Oh yeah, I saw the trailer for that. That looks cool. I'm a big fan of the first Beetlejuice. I really like Michael Keaton in that role. And from what I've heard, like it sounds, like I, I still like Michael Keaton. He hasn't lost it. I mean, if, if anything, I think he's only gotten better with age, like in regard to his acting and his roles. It seems like he's taking it seriously. I've heard him talk about Beetlejuice 2 and they're doing all this old school shit like doing stop motion animation and stuff. So they're not just, you know, doing it all. It's not just all CGI horse shit. So I'm happy to hear about that. Is, yeah, the second one might actually be good. Um, You've given so many TED Talks, but not a single Ned Talk. What's a Ned Talk? I'd love a remake of Resident Evil 5 on something like the Switch or VR, but I doubt we'll ever get that. I'm not a fan of VR, man. I tried VR and I got sick. It made me sad. It's like, I, I have a f friend with, uh, he's got a Oculus. Or whatever, what do you, what the fuck is it called? I think it was Oculus and then Meta bought Oculus and then they call it the Quest now. So it's like a Quest two i think 
and it had Resident Evil 4 on it, the original Resident Evil 4. It was like the VR version of it. And I was like, I was so stoked to try it. I was like, can I please try this? And he's like, yeah, dude, go for it. And so I set it up and I chose full of, full immersion mode. So that means if you use the analog stick on your handle or on your, the thing that you have in your hand, you got two of them. Not con controllers, I guess. One of them's got an analog stick on it for movement. And so you can like, it's kind of, it's, it's, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that there's two modes because that one mode is kind of strange to wrap your head around because like you're, you're on your feet probably with the headset on looking around as if you're actually in the space, but then at the same time you're using a stick to sort of move yourself around in the world instead of actually walking around. I think that can be hard to sort of adjust to. So it makes sense to have a mode where you don't, you can't move around with analog stick control. And it's just about like, basically the alternative is warping from one fixed position to another. And it's sort of, they're stitched together by fades to black or just cuts, instantaneous cuts, you know? So it's just like, I want to warp there, and now I'm here now, and now I can look anywhere from this position, or I can warp there or there. There's no um, movement in between. I think I might have actually preferred that, but I didn't try it. I just tried full immersion mode right away, because it's just like, fuck, I'm a, I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer, you guys. I'm a fucking hardcore gamer. I got this. I can game. I can play full immersion mode. Give me all the immersion. I can fucking do this shit. And then I did it. And I was actually felt quite nauseous after like 40 minutes. And it got to the point where I was just like, fuck, I'm going to puke all over this guy's living room if I don't stop now. Like, I kind of wanted to keep going, but I just... I was getting like motion sickness or whatever. I'm just like, fuck, I actually can't do this anymore. Like if I was just playing this on the couch, I could play res something like Resident Evil for hours and hours. But then like if I'm in VR, like I could only do that for like a half hour, 40 minutes tops before it's just like, okay, that's a little too much. I got to take this off. So I feel like VR isn't quite there yet. Like I don't know what you have to do to make it like so you you don't feel sick playing it or people don't sick feel sick playing it um and just the the hardware is still too bulky like to just sort of have that constantly weighing down on your head for long periods of time um it needs to be the the tech needs to be slimmer they got to slim it down, find a way to do it. I don't know how, but like, yeah. So yeah, it wasn't really like, I, I, I kind of enjoyed, I mean, the, the actual shooting people's heads, like that was, that part of it was fun. Like, oh my God, this is like so precise to the point where it's just like, this is easy now. You know, I remember thinking the same thing with like the Wii edition of Resident Evil 4, you know, you can just point the Wii mote and it's just like headshot, headshot, headshot. Like it was so, it nerfed the game, but it was so fun, you know, that you don't even care. So like I'm having a blast with this. So whatever, even if it's easier than, you know, it's, it's cool. Um, so yeah, it was kind of, it was like that where I was just like, boom, this feels so precise. It took me a while to get a hang of, like... Because I kept doing this dumb thing. Like, if you want a first aid spray, you have to reach over your shoulder. Like, you have to sort... You have to have the paddle in your hand, and then you sort of reach your arm back, and I think you, you press a button while the remote is in that position over your shoulder, and then that'll you'll you'll find that you then have the item the corresponding item in your hand in this case a first aid spray and then you use it but like i instinctively when the game's telling me to reach over my shoulder i was instinctively reaching over my opposite shoulder 
right? So if I'm right-handed, I reach over my left shoulder and vice versa. But when you do that, you don't realize just how much the headpiece of the headset is jutting out forward. So every time I was doing that, crossing over to the other shoulder, I was like banging the paddle off of the headset. And I was just like, oh, fuck, shit. I shouldn't have done that. But I just kept instinctively doing that. And I had to like train myself like, okay, what am I doing? Like the game just wants me to do this. Like sh the same, you, you reach your right hand over your right shoulder, left hand over left shoulder. For some reason, I just couldn't get my brain to like do that. It was just, it was so weird and stupid. There's just little things like that, you know, you got to get accustomed to. Um, so it, yeah, it was, it was a little, it wasn't as, it wasn't as smooth as an experience as I was hoping it would be. But I mean, when I was like, when I f f eventually got a sense of like how to like point and shoot, getting headshots was actually pretty like, I was like, oh, this is pretty sweet. But then the motion sickness kicked in. I'm just like, oh, fuck. Like, I can't do this. Like. And then, so yeah, I only ended up playing for like a 40 minutes or something. And then I don't really have any desire to play it again because that memory of me being sick is so distinct compared to everything else that I'm just like, oh, I don't want to feel sick again. And so no, I think, I think I'm like done with VR. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick it up again with something just to try it out. But like, I'm just, that kind of turned me off the whole experience. It reminded me like, Fuck, 99% of the time, I would rather just, like, be on a couch with a controller and not have all this, like, bullshit on my head. You know? And some things in life are meant to be enjoyed, just... Like, movies and games. You know? There's nothing wrong with looking at a flat 2D screen and just sitting on a couch either by yourself or with friends like that's we don't i feel like we don't need to advance from that you know like moving from that to vr actually feels like a step down and as, as soon as you have multiple vr headsets in the same room it all just kind of feels stupid you know where you're just looking around thinking like what are we doing <laughs> We're all standing around the same room, and we've all got these fucking headsets on. We're like, oh, I'm in a virtual world, you guys. We're all in a virtual world, stumbling around, bumping in the shit. <laughs> just, like, I feel like that's more acceptable with just, like, one person in the room. I mean, even that's kind of depressing and stupid on its own. You're just alone in a room with a fucking headset shutting out reality, you know? It's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. F VR just feels kind of... There's something not right about it. I don't know. That I the idea of just, like, closing yourself off into your own little reality bubble is just fundamentally kind of weird. Um... It's like Plato's allegory of the cave. That's a good point. That is sort of what I'm getting at, is you're just sort of tucked away in your own little bubble. And you're shutting out reality, even in the small confines of the reality of your living room. You're even shutting that out to experience just this little thing that's tight around your head that's not even real. It feels kind of stupid. And... It, it's, I feel like it's fundamentally incongruent to the way human beings behave. Like, I'd, I have a cousin who, he broke his flat screen TV because he was playing a golf game. And the remote swung out of his hand. <laughs> he was just like, I got this dope golf game. You got to check this shit out. He puts his headset on, Right. And he's got his, I can't remember the name of the golfing game, but it was on the quest. And you sort of, you use one of the remotes as like a handle for like the, the golf club, right? And he didn't secure it to his wrist. 
That's why you got it. You have to remember. This is why you always wear the straps. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's with that or the the Wii. Like you, you might think to yourself, I'm not going to fucking do that. That's stupid. But if you, you're in that world long enough, you forget what's actually around you. Right. And then you, so he's, he's lining up his shot. He goes like this, <sighs> slips right out of his hand, smashes his 60 inch TV. <laughs> and like, it's fucked. Like you can see like the, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's glass, but like the, the panel that's sort of behind whatever the top layer, transparent layer is, you can see like it's all cracked and creating these weird lines and like the TV wouldn't even, none of the, no part of the image was functioning at that point because that one part was smashed. And like, he didn't even realize what he did. He was still for all, like he was still in the world of the game. And then he just felt the handle slip out of his hand. And then he heard like a bump. And he's like, oh, what was that? I don't even know. And then he like flipped up the goggles and he's like, oh shit. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> fuck, I don't want to laugh. But like, it's kind of funny. But like, it's such, it was such an expensive TV. <laughs> you know? And it's just like, there's there's a lesson in there somewhere you know what i mean like if you try and shut yourself out from what's actually immediately around you and you don't take precautions like securing the straps like you you know you're gonna you're gonna bump into things you're gonna trip over stuff you're gonna knock shit over you know shit that's actually there <laughs> When it, when it, when a piece of technology forces you to ignore everything in your immediate surroundings, you know, that's, sh people are going to, shit's going to break, you know, and it just makes you wonder, like, is, is this technology we should be even taking on, you know, maybe we should just like not go in this direction, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not, I'm not tr saying like there isn't cool shit being made for VR, but like, I'm thinking it's not really for me at least. Um, my kid has a VR headset and I pick on him a lot. <laughs> Usually going up and scaring him or throwing stuffed animals at him. Oh yeah. I mean, that'll, that'll fucking throw people off. I mean, cause people... You put that headset on for long enough and you get invested in what you're doing, you forget what's actually there. And all of a sudden, you know, someone creeps up behind you and taps you over the shoulder and you're just like, what? That wasn't in the video game? What the fuck? Right? And people have that sudden realization where like, oh shit, the world I'm seeing and the world that's around me are not the same thing. Like, I mean, it's obvious, but sometimes like you have to be you get so caught up in the one thing that you forget, you know, it just naturally sort of goes out of your head. Cause you're just thinking like, you're just so concentrated on what it is you're doing in the video game. Um, that was my Ted talk on VR. Um, Hey bro, just watched your Machinima video. I know you're not looking for other avenues, but I honestly think you should check out Star Citizen Machinimas. Has so many features in mind for cinematics. Star Citizen Machinimas? That game's not even out yet. How the fuck are people making Machinima with Star Citizen? Is it out? I don't think it is. Not yet. I mean, it fucking made me laugh reading about it recently because I saw a headline where it's just like, stop. St I'm paraphrasing, I think, a bit, but like, it was like Star Citizen developers say release is twinkling on the horizon. <laughs> and I'm like, twinkling on the horizon? How long has it been fucking twinkling on the horizon now? Like ten years. <laughs> 
<laughs> 10 years and it's twinkling on the horizon? What, you mean it wasn't twinkling before? Oh, fucking hell. I mean, I don't even, like... I mean, it's taken a ridiculously long time to make, but I I got nothing against it other than that. I mean, Star Citizen might actually be good. Maybe, maybe it is... Maybe it will have been worth all the time, and this will be the best fucking game ever made by a human being. <laughs> and they'll be like, see, we needed all that time to make the best game ever. Somehow I doubt that's going to be the case, but... I, I wouldn't hold it against Star Citizen for taking a long time to make if it's good. You know? It's like, oh, well, it's good, you know? So, good job, I guess. Um, But yeah, I, I didn't know... I mean, who's making S Star Citizen Machinima? I didn't know that was a... I f I'd figure the game would have to come out first. Are you just saying, like, in the future, when it does come out, I should consider making movies with it? Like, I don't know. Remember how long Scorn took? Um, I know, I know what Scorn is, I haven't played it, but I didn't know it was one of those games that had this, like, super long development time. It doesn't seem like the type to be that, to require all that time, you know? Star Citizen, I can understand, because it's doing this sort of, like, huge interplanetary scope, you know? Um, or for a game like Scorn? I wouldn't have thought that took that long. Um, check out Machinimas, though. I think you will be impressed. Yeah, all right, I'll have a look later. It's basically like a full game as it is. I remember watching a funny Bed Bananas video on it where he and his friends make their own narrative. What's a full game? Star Citizen? Is it out or not? Like, I, I didn't think it was out. Maybe there's some playable, like, beta build or something. Yeah, I don't know. Early access. Oh, okay. I didn't even think it was that far along that there's actually an early access build. John, one of my college courses started talking about modernism. It immediately made me think of you. Oh, because of the postmodernism meme? <laughs> don't know how that became such a big meme with me. Because I don't think I was entirely wrong. I just I just had a flawed, fundamental understanding of what it was. Because I couldn't wrap my head around it at the time. But, I mean, I get it now. Is it really meme material? <laughs> Good to see you streaming again, John. Excited for Hard Justice. I have the urge to go watch One Life Remaining again for the nostalgia. Don't! No! I don't care that you hate it. It's funny. Oh, well. If you like it, that's all that matters. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate appreciate that. Celticorn for four ninety nine says, I think an episode of RB and Le Chief RB and the the Le Chief in VR would have would have be incredibly hilarious. Glad to see you're doing well, good sir. Yeah, I'm doing all right, man. Um, R being the chief in VR. I don't even know how I would do that. Because, I mean, the headset's too big for them. It's not like... I mean, with a controller, you can just put it in their lap and it sort of works visually. But, like, I don't know how it would incorporate an actual headset into, like, the show in live action. And unless you mean RB and the Chief in VR, it's like we're seeing the VR world and you see Arbiter and Chief as avatars, which I suppose I could just do as Machinima in any Halo game. So, but then, I mean, how do I, how do I, 
how do I make those segments stand out like they're VR? Because it's just the same method that I would doing any mission of a sequence in any se of my series that I make. You know what I mean? Like what makes this particular thing like, oh, like we're in VR now. Maybe that would be the joke is that it's no different. I don't know. But yeah, I got to think about that one. I don't know if there's an, I don't know if there's an episode there yet. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, there's a, there's a Resident Evil 2 remake mod that came out that I thought was pretty cool. It was a fixed perspective mod. And it sort it has like around 1700 or something, f uh, f uniquely placed fixed camera angles to make it play like one of the original Resident Evil games. So it's like still... I mean, of course, it's all tank controls, but now it's like you can play the Resident Evil 2 remake with all these static camera angles. I just thought that was so cool, because it looks like the gameplay has actually been tweaked. Like, the aiming, the targeting system is tweaked to actually work with that style of playing. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but it just looked like... It just looked really cool. Like, it's so cool when you opening when you open up your game to being able to be modded like the shit some of the shit people do is like really awesome but like the the company has to be willing to like let all that shit fly you know it's it can be annoying when these companies come after like modders and shit like like you know Nintendo is the biggest culprit of this where they'll just go after people that are doing stuff that's just it's harmless i mean even to nintendo there's just like you know it's actually i've was in some cases it's a loss for them to come after some people in the way that they do and it's just like what are you doing like you, this is against your interests i understand this protecting your brands and shit but like you can go way too far with that and in some cases they are and it's just like you're hurting yourself and your image here i mean so many people right now are dunking on nintendo for just being way too like stringent with their ips like i, I just i read like the other day like some years old video of like a Call of Duty game modded to have Pokemon in it. And it was DMCA'd and the, recently taken down. It's just like, fuck off, dude. Nobody cares about this shit. This isn't damaging to your brand. I mean, you can put anything in anything. Why, why does it matter that it's Pokemon? You can put fucking Shrek in there. Is DreamWorks gonna come after everybody? The amount of time Shrek has been fucking put in artificially into whatever but you're gonna come along and be like oh no you can't put Pokemon in that or I can understand Nintendo going after some people I mean you know making takedown requests for say like a mod that makes Breath of the Wild multiplayer I mean obviously I can see the cool part of that like, I can see why that's a cool thing, obviously. But when you have a mod like that, and it can't, the multiplayer aspect of it can't be taken advantage of without like a dumped ROM, you are going to, going to incentivize a lot of people to just download the ROM and then load it up in whatever software tool they need to to get the multiplayer going. And then people are just not, perhaps not going to bother even buying. The actual game I can see them feeling like okay we're, this is actually gonna financially hurt us considerably let's just say no you can't do this um, I mean it's it's one of those things where I just see both sides of it I mean it's it's a, a really cool project but in a case like that I can be like yeah I mean Nintendo chose to take that one down 
I can see why. But then th- that shit, like, with taking down years old videos that just happen to have fucking Pokemon in them, like, who gives a shit? This is stupid. You know? I don't know. Um. Oh, wow. We got another super chat. TBMNKY for $50 says do some push ups every day. Start small and focus on form and not numbers. Do the Los Angeles voice. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. But I, I do do push ups every day. Well, actually, I do. I do. I alternate. I'll, one day I'll do. I do different. So I have one sort of workout formula. It's like, here's all like the moves and like the, like the moves that I do, whether they're push-ups, dips, squats, knee, knee lifts or whatever. Right. And then I'll sort of, I'll split that across two days. Right. So I just do as much as I can one day and then whatever's left, it's just like, I'll do that tomorrow. And then the day after it resets where it's just like, okay, I, I can do whatever I want off the list as much as I can. And then I'll do the next half of it the next day. And so like on my list, I have push ups, but I also have, I lift weights. So I'll do bicep curls, forearm curls, and then lifts where I sort of lie. I'm leaning over horizontally and I pick the weight up off the floor and I just do that over and over in one arm and then I do the other arm and so like what I'll do is one day I'll do weights and then the next day I'll do push-ups and dips and then the the day after I'll go back to the weights again so that's I have a thing I I have a little system that works for me and it takes some figuring out day by day you know because like I had my whole I used to do my whole list I used to do everything on that list every day and what what would happen is that I would do like half of it and then get too out of breath to keep going. And then I just sit down and then I'd get lazy and then I would be t- too tired to even think or do anything creative, let alone keep working out. So I'm just like, fuck, I'm wasting time here. This isn't working. What can I do to fix this? And so I decided, okay, I'll do everything I can up to exhaustion. And then I'll just save the last, the, whatever's left over, I'll do that tomorrow. And then that's, that keeps me from like sitting down and getting lazy. Cause right after I finish that little workout, I'll just go straight in the shower and then, you know, brush my teeth and all that stupid shit and then go out for my walk. And then that'll wake me up, you know, and then help me like chill out. And then I'll get fresh air. I'm, I'm walking around. I'm getting some sunlight and then I'm, when I come back home, I'm like energized to actually get some shit done. So that's my little system that I have. As for the Los Angeles voice, is this the voice you were talking about? (coughs) Oh man. Makes my throat scratchy. And then I got a cough. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the coolest fucking place in the world. Everybody there is super cool. And not you. Unless you're in Los Angeles with all the cool people. <clears throat> Los Angeles. There you go. There's the Los Angeles voice. Uh, TBMNKY, thank you very much for your generous super chat. It's very nice of you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> want some gun? <laughs> I don't know why that's still so funny, but that still makes me laugh. It's so dumb. Um, <clears throat> uh, what other stupid shit's happening? I keep seeing Sydney Sweeney's tits everywhere. What's going on with that? They're all over the place. 
I mean, she's got a nice pair. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I just feel like I'm seeing it constantly. Like, everyone's using it in their thumbnails and shit. Like, it's all over Twitter. Anyway, I didn't really have much else to say on that. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I, I haven't seen Sydney Sweeney in a lot of stuff. I saw her in a movie called Reality, where she plays a real girl who gets like um detained or like quote unquote detained by the FBI because she's a suspected terrorist or something. She was really good in that. Was she in Madam Web? She was in something recently that's gotten a lot of press, but like. I can't remember what exactly it was. I don't- maybe- I don't think it was Madame Webb, or maybe she just wasn't the lead character in it. I can't remember. Dakota Johnson, that was the lead in Madame Webb. Um, Euphoria? Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen Euphoria. She was in Madame Webb? Okay, yeah, I haven't seen Madame Webb either, but I've heard things <laughs> about that movie you know it's it's funny because like i was already familiar with the madam web character from the spider-man animated series and that was actually a pretty cool arc of that cartoon that actually s kicked off the multiverse thing in the cartoon way before the movies did it before that before the multiverse became like a a, a Hollywood meme the to the degree of prevalence that it's at right now like before all that the the 90s Spider-Man cartoon already did that it was actually pretty sweet like multiple Spider-Man different dimensions and shit and Ma Madam Web facilitated all that because she created like the portals for Spider-Man to to go through and so w when I heard a Madam Web movie I was kind of interested at first but then i heard it's just like a big joke and just terribly made and everything i kind of want to to i've heard that it's not even like it's not even one of those so bad it's like really entertaining kind of movies apparently it's just like straight up boring i don't know what to make of it i'm i am curious to see just how bad it is because i i like sort of even if a movie's like boring bad, sometimes I'm intrigued to see where it is they screwed up and to, to what degree. Just because like, sometimes it's insightful to see where movies go wrong. You know, as, as someone who like makes films and writes films, like I have a particular interest in that. Like s seeing people's errors when it comes to like making cinema stuff. If you want to watch it, then go. Who cares what people say? I don't know if I want to go to the theater to it. That's the thing. Like, if it's on streaming, maybe I'll check it out. How was Roadhouse? Was McGregor funny in it? I was a big fan of him in his heyday. He was always hilarious at press conferences. Yeah, I like the Roadhouse remake. I thought that was pretty good. I mean, it's it's got some weak performances, um, it kind of, it, I wish it would set up some characters more. Um, but Jake Gyllenhaal is quite good in it. He doesn't say much or do much other than the fighting, obviously, but that is that character. Like if you've watched the, um, the original Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze, it is, it's the same sort of character, like, really, like, quiet, restrained, only speaks when he needs to, really polite, doesn't really want to push anybody's buttons or, like, cause any antagonism. He just wants things to, like, go nice and smooth all the time around him, just because he has this monster within him that if he unleashes it, it's going to be a problem, right? That's sort of, like, what that whole movie revolves around. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal actually does a pretty good job of what Patrick Swayze was doing in the original. 
uh, and Conor McGregor, he is funny. I mean, I don't know what, like, people say his performance is weird in the movie, like, or not good. I don't think it's that. I just think his accent is a little hard to understand sometimes. Because he's got this sort of weird, westernized Irish way of speaking. It's, sort of, it's like Irish-Canadian or something. I don't know where he's from exactly or where he lives, but... It's just it's just a little odd sounding, and it, it can be hard to figure out what exactly his, he's saying sometimes. Eastern Ireland? Well, I'm I'm not talking about the area of Ireland. I'm talking about he's from Talite in Dublin. Okay, right. But I, I'm when I say Western, I'm talking about the West. You know, like the Western continent, like America. Like I figured he was Irish and then came to America and then says, and then his dialect was Westernized. <laughs> you know, mixed in with whatever people were speaking in whatever part of the U.S. he was living in. Or, I don't know if he was Canadian or whatever. I just assumed that he came over and lived in the Americas somewhere. Because, I mean, it, it doesn't sound straight up Irish to me. Maybe, maybe it is, and he just kind of talks weird. Um, but, uh... But for the most part, like, I'm pretty good with, like, Scottish, understanding Scottish and Irish, like, um, it's, but there, there were a few things that Connor said in the movie where it's just like, what did he say there? That sounds kind of weird. But I could, I always got, like, the gist of what he was, like, trying to convey. Um, and he is really funny in it. I mean, you can argue he's just being himself in the movie. I mean, that is the joke that everyone's making, right? It's just like... Conor McGregor didn't even know they were making a fucking movie. They were just like, oh, let's let's just film Conor McGregor during his day-to-day -day activities and build a movie around that. <laughs> of course, he's doing all this ridiculous shit in the movie because he has a reputation for being this sort of, like, nutcase. I mean, I don't get that... I don't know that much about him. I've seen him in interviews, and he seems, like, pretty down-to-earth. Um, but yeah, in the movie, he's fucking ridiculous. And I think like that's to the movie's benefit. Like, I love it when movies do that. It's such a cool, it's such a funny and effective trope in movies where, you know, you have the protagonist, right? And then you have like bad guy group and protagonist is pissing them off. And so they have to call in, like, a guy, you know? It's like, I know a guy who will sort this out. I, the, the fixer, or, you know, the destroyer, or some henchman dude who's, like, really specialized, right? It's like, usually happens, if it's going to happen, like, halfway through the movie, as sort of, like, a at midway act two escalation, right? And then it's just the crazy guy comes in, you know? And it, that's exactly what... Roadhouse does with Knox, Conor McGregor's character. And at that point, you're just like, <laughs> all right, uh, this is tongue in cheek. It's not taking itself too seriously. And I'm actually looking forward to where this goes because this character is insane. And seeing him go up against Jake Gyllenhaal's sort of restrained but effective character is going to be fun. And it was like, I mean, some of the fights, they're a little weird to look at. Because they, they assist them with CGI to make the contact, to make the the impacts hit, right? So, like, w in actually shooting it, there would have been an, a bunch of shots where it's filmed in profile. So you can see just exactly how far two people are from each other. One of them swings a punch, but of course you, you never want to hit the, the other actor for real, right? So there's going to be that gap there. And I think they use CGI to sort of close those gaps to make it look like, oh, he's actually hitting him. But it doesn't it doesn't look that great. I would say probably most of the time you can you notice that it's there. There's a few hits that look all right. That you you can still tell it's CGI assisted, but you're just like, that was actually okay. I thought I felt that with like the headbutt. 
It was in a lot of the promotional material. Conor McGregor walks right up to Jake Gyllenhaal in the bar. He's like, you never never get this close or something. He says something like that, and then he headbutts him. And the head actually makes contact, and it's, it's assisted with CGI, but it looks okay, even though you can tell. It's just like... Okay, I buy that. That's fine. But there are other there are other usage of in the movie of CGI where it's just like that looked weird as fuck and unnatural. Like there's a whole fight scene at the beginning with Post Malone and just nothing about it looks convincing. It's just really weird. I don't know if I wish they'd done that a bit better, but like all this stuff, a lot most of the stuff with Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor fighting is pretty well done because like as cgi aside you can tell that they're actually like getting rough with with each other and um putting a lot of effort into it like the choreography and jumping over bars and smashing through glass and shit like it's all practically well done i just wish that they had shot it in a more traditional way where instead of going the cgi route of making punches hit that they would do the classic thing of like just filming fight scenes at an angle where you have that trouble with depth perception deliberately. So you can't tell. Like if you if if I swing at somebody, right, and it's like some distance from the person's face, you can definitely see that gap when it's filmed profile. But as soon as you shoot that at an angle, all of a sudden it becomes hard to tell whether or not it's actually hitting. And then if you just have the other guy go, uh and it's like well timed that's fine i mean why not just do that instead like instead of just doing the c embracing the cgi thing full on and then only use cgi if you absolutely need to because you know there's an error in the production that was uh the glaring example of that was in the dark knight rises i remember there's a scene where batman's fighting a bunch of guys in like a it's like an entrance to one one of the entrances to the tunnel system he's fighting a bunch of dudes and like he punches this guy and he the, the other guy is so far off from the swing but like the guy falls back as if he was hit anyway he's like Ugh. <laughs> and it's like no come on you could have you probably should have reshot that one or just filmed that one at a different angle you know um but anyway um yeah i mean Ro roadhouse the remake i mean the original has problems too the, but i actually i think i prefer the original roadhouse with patrick patrick swayze a bit more overall the problem with the original is that i feel like the th in the third act is sort of is underwhelming because it just sort of boils down to like this sort of weak fight in this mob boss's living room and it's just it just feels like low stakes what the remake does is it it made the the last act like higher stakes and more crazy which i liked and more like it's just felt like a more definitive showdown in the remake um, there are, but there are other, there are other aspects that the original actually did better. But ov overall, I like both and I would, despite the remake's flaws, I would recommend it. I think it's a fun watch. Just know that there's going to be weird CGI shit and some weak acting and some plot points that are kind of stupid, but it's just like a fun crowd pleaser with, you know shirtless dudes fighting <laughs> it's just fun it just feels like a back to basics like 80s movie being made today sort of thing i mean i i, I found it really enjoyable i laughed quite a bit so i wasn't just laughing at it either like i was actually laughing because the movie intended for me to laugh and I also found the plot simple, but fairly engaging. <clears throat> hey, what's going on here, John? Oh, nothing. Just talking shit about stupid shit. You know how it is. 
Um, what else? There's a Alone in the Dark remake that just came out that intrigues me. I never played the original, but it always appealed to me. Because I think that's, it, that was the game that started a lot of survival horror shit like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. I think it's like a, it's, it kind of looks like Resident Evil if you were to look at s snapshots of its fixed perspective and stuff, but I think it plays more like a point and click adventure. Um, John, Rooster Teeth is gone. Talk about it. I talked about Rooster Teeth already. The show doesn't start just because you joined the room, okay? I've talked about a lot of shit already. You can rewind if you want. Um, so I, I heard the remake is a bit underwhelming, but I'm quite curious to try it. It looks cool. Um, Rooter teeth gone, but imaginative logo remains. It's poetic in a way. It's like pottery, you guys. It rims. Uh, yeah, so Alone in the Dark seems cool. I haven't tried it yet, but... But, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna sit and just binge Halo one of these days. Um, the second season, I mean. Confirmed season nine already? I don't have a ninth season planned out. I felt like all I said all there is to say when it comes to Arby and the Chief story seasons. Uh, what else? They're remaking the Max Payne games, which is cool. Max Payne 1 and 2 are awesome. I just wish um, Max Payne 1 had, like, ragdoll physics, because that, that really made the... Si the second one a lot more fun and the third one and now it's just like oh cool so you can we're gonna do the first one again but with like modern tech that's awesome but e even then even though it's like all scripted deaths the uh max Payne one is really cool one and two are definitely worth playing and three as well i mean i the only distinction there is like rockstar took it over and Max Payne 3 is really fun, but it's bogged down by load times. Because sometimes you just want to, like, play a checkpoint over and over and just shoot guys. But because it's so story-driven, and it, it requires loading so much assets for all the set pieces, like, all the cutscenes are, like, fake loading screens, or hidden loading screens. So, like, you have to sit through the majority of all the cutscenes over and over. You know? I wish they had sort of constructed the game in a way where you could quickly reload checkpoints. Or have, like, a separate mode where you're just shooting waves of enemies in, like, an environment where, like, all the... All the objects and glass and breakable shit, it, like, regenerates. Something like that. I don't know. It's just like these quick bursts of fun. And then it's just like, oh, fuck. I either got to restart and watch all that checkpoint stuff or move forward through a bunch of like empty rooms and like wait for like the next set piece when all I want to do really is just like break shit and shoot guys. That was what was cool about like replaying Max Payne 2 over and over is like uh, you could reload checkpoints and they would load like that. Like, it's like you clear all the enemies in a, in a certain area. It's like, boom, reload, instantly reset. All the guys are back, and you just kill them all again, and it's cool. Um, yeah, they're... Yeah, it's Remedy... Remedy's doing the remakes. I mean, they, they, they bragged that it has the same budget as Alan Wake 2, but I don't even know what to make of that. I don't even give a shit. It's just like I don't care how much money you step you spend on it. Like just, just make it good. Who care? Like whatever the money. I don't care about the, the whatever the. F 
And I don't measure the quality of a game in the fucking dollar amount. You know what I mean? It's like, it's either good or it's not. Um, and certainly we've had plenty of examples of massive budget games that are fucking dog shit, so who cares? Um... what else? I think maybe we'll call it a night there. I'm getting tired. I gotta just... Um... Decompress. Maybe I'll throw a movie on or something. And then I think... I don't know... I kinda wanna... S s I was thinking about streaming a game... Soon, but... Like I, to like I said before, I mean... That's all time I could be spending just getting more shots for hard justice, you know? So maybe I'll just go back into just working. And then maybe when the first episode is at least shot, then I'll... Maybe I'll do a video game. But right now I'm in the thick of just, like, getting shots for hard justice, so I think I'm just going to finish that off. But, you know, I, just, I wanted to stream today just because I just put the trailer out and I wanted to show remind people this month that, you know, I'm working on shit and, um, just tell people touch base, let people know where my head's at, what I'm working on right now. Um, I don't think I missed any super chats. I think I got all of them. You know what? Fucking hell. I should check out the stream labs thing. Because I'm so bad with that. Like, I, I put that in my, the description. There probably isn't even anything on there. But, like, I do put that link there in case anyone wants to donate money and not have a cut of it go to YouTube. Um, But I always forget to check them. Because I'm just so focused on the Super Chat stuff. Um, I'm trying to find the fucking link for it. Uh, highlighter, no. Overlays, no. What the fuck was it? Dashboard? This might be it. Fuck, they don't make this page easy to find. And I don't know why. Tip history, okay. Oh yeah, there's there's nothing. Yeah, so I'm all caught up on that. Yeah, so I'm uh I'm gonna end it here, folks. I hope you enjoyed the stream. I really appreciate everybody tuning in, and I especially appreciate the sheer amount of super chats. I mean, that's incredibly generous of everybody, so thank you for that. That means a lot. Helps keep me do going, funding my stupid little job of um, making movies with video games, but I do enjoy it, and I hope you're excited about Hard Justice. I'm working on it. I got a lot shot already. Just got to get the whole, all the voices done and sometime next month I'll put out episode one, I think. And then, um, I, I hope you guys will enjoy that. I hope you like the teaser and I hope you'll stick around for, for that and some more streams and stuff later. All right. Thanks a lot, guys.